Okay, Snake, let's start with the basics. I'll provide instructions via codec. Some of these controls are new, so it's best if you practice now before you get back into the thick of things. Listen carefully to my instructions and then give it a try. I've also set your codec so that you can receive short messages in listen-only mode. With MCON implemented, there's less chance of you accidentally giving away your position. Snake, you should keep practicing the basic controls until you've got them down pat. Wait until you're in the thick of things and it could be too late. Use the left stick to move. Depending on how much you tilt it, you'll either walk or run. Keep practicing until you get the hang of it. And don't forget, the faster you move, the more noise you'll make. Pressing the crawl button changes your stance. Hold the button down to get down on your belly, or tap it quickly to switch between squatting and standing. Go ahead and give it a few tries until you get the hang of it. Snake, the fighting between the PMCs and the militia is heating up. We'd better practice those basic controls now, while there's still time. Snake, the Gecko are starting to hunt down the militia. Those things are deadly. You've got to avoid their close-range attacks. This isn't a fight, it's a slaughter. With the firepower they've got, the militia don't stand a chance against the Gecko. Be careful not to get dragged down along with them. Snake, head north from your current position. Got that? Stay out of that monster's sight, Snake. Judging from the state of things, I'd say north is your best bet. Head north. This is Snake. Do you read me? What's the situation? I'm just inside the city limits. This place is crawling with lizards. Ah, AT Corps unmanned bipedal weapons. Officially designated Irving by the US military. They've spread like wildfire among the PMCs. There are more of those things now in service than tanks. They've got tough armor plating and are highly agile to boot. Your best bet is to stay out of their sights. Unmanned. Pretty soon they'll have put living, breathing soldiers out of work. Even so, that's an awful lot of gecko for this scenario. Their numbers exceed the war price for that region. It must have something to do with Liquid's arrival on the scene. You really think he's here? You'll have to find the army's operatives and ask them yourself. Oh, and Snake, I went ahead and used the Mark II to scout out the area before your arrival. You'll find it up ahead. Mark II? It's a remote mobile terminal. Sonny and I built it. The Mark II will provide you with a map of the area as well as any battle situation data. You should find it before you do anything else. Okay, got it. The rendezvous point is marked on your map. I'll be waiting for you there. Snake, your first order of business is to rendezvous with the Mark II. Just follow my instructions and use your Octo Camo to make sure the enemy doesn't see you along the way. Octocamo is a newly developed camouflage technology that's capable of almost exactly mimicking the appearance of objects and surfaces. It's easy to use, too. All you have to do is press up against a wall or object, or lie flat on the ground while wearing the suit. It can be a powerful tool if you use it right. So tell me, how does it feel? Mm, not as itchy as I'd have thought. That suit can mimic the color, pattern, and even the surface texture of walls and floors. Kinda like procuring your own camo on site, right? I do just fine with the regular stuff. I'm not a chameleon. You've got it all wrong. We're not talking about lizards. This is Octocamo. In other words, it's based on the camouflage capabilities of the octopus. Octopus are sometimes called Ninja of the Sea. They fool their enemies by mimicking not just the color of their surroundings, but also the shape of the terrain. That suit takes its cue from defensive deception found in nature. Besides, you may not have known this, but there is a snake that can change its body color too. It's called the Kapuas Mud Snake. It's a poisonous reptile indigenous to the Kapuas River on the island of Borneo. Its coloring is normally a reddish brown, but sometimes turns to white. So, snakes can sport disguises too. Hey, what happened to stealth camo? You used to wear it all the time. All that does is create an optical illusion. It's no use against Gecko with their infrared sensors. 
Octocamo, on the other hand, has micropeltier arrays that regulate the absorption and release of heat, harmonizing the wearer's body heat with any background IR radiation, which means it can offer you at least some camouflage protection against enemy infrared sensors. With so many unmanned weapons in the field these days, I'd expect it to outperform the old stealth camo. But if you start walking or running or making a lot of noise, you'll risk getting spotted by the enemy. And get this, the suit also reduces the weight load on your body and amplifies muscle power. The inside lining sends a weak electric current through your body that stimulates phospholipid production inside your cells, improving circulation. That should make your life gauge recover more rapidly when you're hurt. In other words, Snake, it's a bit of a crutch. You can cut the senior citizen crap, Otacon. Snake, you know how that first gun you found stopped working? Well, from what I can tell, it looks like the problem was with the ammo. The ammo? I'm betting it's because they were using cheap local ammunition. The ammo probably triggered abnormal combustion, which excessively raised the pressure and caused the cartridges to stick in the chamber. It's a pretty rare phenomena. I guess you just got lucky. Hmm. More like unlucky. Look on the bright side. It means there weren't any problems with the gun itself. I don't think it'll happen again. Otacon, those two-legged machines, they're not like the Metal Gears I'm used to dealing with. Right. Strictly speaking, though, they're not Metal Gears. What are you talking about? The Gears you fought before were all basically designed and produced to serve as nuclear platforms. Ray was an exception to the rule. But even that was an anti-Metal Gear weapon designed to defeat the Metal Gear clones popping up all over the world. Its value was still measured in terms of the framework of nuclear strategy. It's been 25 years since the end of the Cold War. We live in a world of regional conflict and asymmetric warfare, and it's getting worse every year. The age of the war economy is upon us. The value of Metal Gear as a weapon, the very concept itself has changed with the times. You might even say it's evolved. Nowadays, a Metal Gear needs to be more than a nuclear attack platform. It needs to be adaptable, well-suited to fight in large numbers, traverse urban settings and work alongside infantry. The Gecko were the answer. There are different types of Gecko designed for different missions, and not all of them are equipped with nuclear capabilities, so technically, they're not Metal Gears. Of course, there are still some of the old Metal Gears around, their primary job is to launch nuclear strikes. But these days, Gecko are the first name in bipedal war machines. They may have gotten smaller, but they're as ferocious as ever. Whatever you do, don't underestimate them. Don't worry. I wasn't planning on it. Snake, that circle that appears around your body is called a threat ring. It's a visual display of the sense you get from entities all around you. When you're crouching or lying down and concentrating, it forms a perfect circle. Your sense is represented as waves. The stronger the sense, the greater the wave. Hostile entities are displayed as colors. Get acquainted. It'll save your life. Oh, and one more thing. Your senses will suffer when your sight gets low. The ring will reflect that, too. Keep it in mind, okay? Snake. I'm sure you've noticed the dust bins used for trash collection in that area. I'll bet they're big enough to fit inside. It could come in handy if you need to stay out of sight until the coast is clear. To get inside a dust bin, stand in front of it and press the action button. Stand in front of it, press the action button. Got it. Once you're inside, tilt the six-axis wireless controller to sneak a peek outside. You can also launch a first-person attack that way. When you're ready to get out, Press the action button again. Snake, I know you already know this, but there's no point in hiding if the enemy sees you doing it. Make sure no one's watching. I've got some intel on the PMCs deployed in that area. They're a part of Praying Mantis Corporation, based out of the United Kingdom. It's one of the five largest PMCs in the world. Its business activity includes soldiers for hire, Supply and logistics services, education and training for state armies, everything you'd expect. During the Iraq War, Praying Mantis contracted with the U.S. government to send large numbers of its soldiers into combat zones, 
which is why the local regime opted to hire Praying Mantis, a UK-based company, and not their regular army to fight the rebels for them. They were buying their experience. Snake, I've said it a hundred times already, and I'll say it again. Do not let the enemy see you. If the enemy catches sight of you, they'll dispatch reinforcements to your location. You're on your own out there. No backup. There's no place to run and no place to hide. That's why... You worry too much, Otacon. Believe me, I know what'll happen if I screw up. Okay, then. Just be extra careful and stay out of sight. Rendezvous with the Mark II. I'll show you which route to take. Just do as I say. And don't forget to use Octocamo. How did it go? Did you manage to hide? Yeah, I did like you said. <sighs> Looks like this is where they dump their household trash. Hmm, huh. how can you tell? Because it stinks in here. Bad. Leftovers from last night's dinner, probably. Ooh, leftovers. Mm, and there's some bugs crawling around on my face. Ugh. It feels like roaches. There's a whole bunch of them scurrying around. <sighs> Make sure you get the smell of them off you before coming back here. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Ugh, seriously, doesn't it make you sick? I'd crawl into a toilet if it kept me out of sight. Huh. Something crawling up my leg. Ugh. I can't even imagine. Ugh. You know, you might want to get out of there as soon as the coast is clear. Yeah, not the best place for a nap. No kidding. Otacon, seriously, what's with all these ads? Oh, you mean battlefield ads. Battlefield ads? Is that what they're called? On the street, anyway. It's what people are calling any ad having to do with the war economy. Privatizing the military has inevitably created intense competition for market share among PMCs and defense industries. Everybody wants to expand their market, get a bigger piece of the pie, so they're churning out truckloads of ads, exactly like the ones we see every day. But war is not something you can just write off. It may seem that way, but the war economy is an enormous driving force in the world today. There are people whose livelihoods depend on those ads. Same goes for internet ads, TV commercials. The world's gone mad, and us with it. I know, but that's reality. Snake, the PMC soldiers are using ID guns. ID guns? See how the word locked appears in the weapon list? Yeah. ID guns are equipped with locks. As long as the lock is engaged, you can't pull the trigger. Any suggestions? The locks are only disengaged when they recognize the nanomachine ID inside a soldier's body. Anyone not possessing nanomachines keyed to the system, or anyone who's keyed but not authorized to use that weapon, won't be able to pass the ID gun's verification process. So I can't use PMC guns? I'm afraid not. You're not registered with the system. And it's not just weapons, either. Vehicles, buildings, everything used for military purposes is secured with this ID control system. Without the proper IDs, it's impossible for PMCs or state armies to fight. Think of it as a soldier's dog tag, only at the nano level. So, I shouldn't even bother picking up ID guns. For now, at least. But they might come in handy later on. Snake! You've got to rendezvous with our informants. Listen, the fighting around you is getting more intense. Use radar and the Mark II to make your job easier. I created the Mark II to provide you with mission support. It's outfitted with a full suite of support functions. It can transport weapons and items, assess your condition, conduct recon, provide map data, and analyze the state of battle. You can also use its menu screen to adjust camouflage settings and change equipment. To access the menu screen, press the Start button. I've set the Mark II to shadow you at all times. It'll be there for you to call upon whenever and wherever you need it. Tell me something, Otacon. What possessed you to name it Metal Gear Mark II? I named it that so I'd never forget that I was the one who designed Rex. But the Mark II's no weapon of mass destruction. 
It's a remote mobile terminal designed solely to support you. I want to show the world that technology can work wonders when it's used the right way. I'll bet that 50 years from now, robot buddies like the Mark II will be a vital part of our society. Even now, 30% of all snipers use robot spotters. I don't think it's quite what Asimov imagined, but we may already be living in the Caves of Steel. Let me give you a brief rundown on controlling the Mark II. Use the left stick to move it around. Use the right stick to adjust the camera angle. To execute an electric shock attack with the manipulator, hold down the aim button and press the attack button. See a switch? Turn it on and off with the manipulator. Wall in front of you? Knock on it to make some noise. To turn stealth camo on and off, press the stealth button. Press in the R3 button to switch between first person and overhead views. All the controls I've explained to you are available for review in briefing. Check it out if you forget how to do something. Snake, the weapons you pick up will be temporarily stored in your backpack. To use one, you need to be carrying it on your person. First, press the start button to open up the Mark II's menu screen and choose weapons. Then move the cursor to the weapon you want to use and press the OK button to select it. The same goes for your other equipment too, except you choose items from the menu screen. There's a limit to how much gear you can carry. Keep that in mind when considering what to take and what to leave behind. If you ever forget how to use the controls or just need a refresher, review them by going to briefing on the Mark II menu screen. Don't forget, Snake, this is a battlefield. Conditions are changing all the time. Sometimes those conditions make it easier for you to lay low. Sometimes they make it harder. Always be on the lookout for the tides to turn. If you see an opening, grab it. For example, if the enemy is locked in battle, they won't be watching their backs. You might try sneaking behind them. During manual control, the Mark II maintains a wireless link with you. But the control signal range is deliberately kept short by an attenuator on the transmitter circuit. The distance varies by environment, so I can't give you an exact figure, but even under the best conditions, it can't exceed 50 meters. 50 meters? That's pretty short. Why impose a limit like that? Seems more useful if I could control it from further away. Of course, I need plenty of signal when I control it, but in your case, you have to be conscious of the danger from DF. You can't risk using a high-power electrical signal for too long. It's like holding up a big sign saying, hey, I'm over here. So try and keep the Mark II close to you when you use it. Keep that in mind and the Mark II should serve you well. Snake, this should go without saying, but just so we're clear, you're practically defenseless while controlling the Mark II. So if you're gonna use it, you should do it from someplace you're not likely to be found. Right now, the militia and PMCs are at a stalemate and just about the whole area is lit up with gunfire. Things are dangerous there, even for a guy like you. But if you could somehow tip the balance... Uh, I might be able to divert the hotspot elsewhere. Bingo! I'll bet you could shape battlefield conditions to make sneaking easier. Maybe by destroying a key weapon that one side relies on. I see you found yourself an operator uniform. As long as you're wearing it, you can do what you need to do, and the militiamen won't suspect a thing. It'll be a useful tool in certain situations. But be careful. Hurt a fellow militiaman while wearing the uniform, and you'll blow your cover. Got it? Snake, you need to rendezvous with our informants. They're U.S. Special Forces. If you need to know which way to go, check your radar. Otacon, you gave the Mark II stealth capability? Yeah. The Mark II doesn't have to worry about damage from EM waves because it's a machine, and its surface area is small enough that cost isn't a problem. The trade-off being that it can be easily spotted by heat-seeking unmanned weapons. Keep that in mind, okay? Head for the building where our informants are waiting. Your radar will show you which way to go. The device you're wearing over your left eye is the solid eye. 3D glasses, huh? I remember having a toy pair called Tobit Acid back when I was a kid. Tobit Acid? Um, okay. Never heard of it. 
The Solid Eye is a multi-purpose goggle equipped with a variety of functions. It has the same night vision capabilities as ENVGs, as well as a monocular function. It can also display a wide range of data as called for by the situation at hand. It's capable of using visual cues to pull up target data on any soldiers or weapons within its field of vision. Say, for instance, the target is a soldier. The solid eye will display the soldier's physical and emotional state based on body temperature, heart rate, and even sweat secretion. You can toggle the solid eye's functions in the item window. Snake. The solid eye's night vision mode can give you a clear view of footprints left behind by the enemy. Use this feature to help you determine their patrol routes more efficiently. I designed your radar exactly to your specifications, Snake. The baseline map, shown in the upper right of the screen, shows a visual representation of what your senses tell you, including sense you're not even conscious of. It compiles and amplifies data on surrounding temperature, humidity, sounds, and smells. Think of it as a digital expression of the feel of your environment. The feel? You mean my close range senses? That's one way of putting it, yeah. The stronger a feel is, the more vividly it shows up on the radar. But if you're somewhere with a high baseline, in the middle of a combat zone, say, or a panicking crowd, it's tougher to pick up that feel. Granted, you tend to stick out more when it's quiet around you, and it's easier to slip by unnoticed in a commotion, but it also makes you less alert to threats. Living organisms, such as soldiers and moving objects like unmanned weapons, give off strong feels, so they'll show up clearly on your radar. The radar also displays the strength of the ripples you yourself send out to others. The more you stick out, the bigger and brighter your radar presence will be. On the other hand, keeping quiet, staying still, and using octocamo to blend in with the environment makes your radar presence smaller indicating that you're less likely to be detected by the enemy. Snake, I know the Mark II's just a mobile terminal made to support you and all, but that doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want with it. Do me a favor, will you? The next time you consider sending the Mark II out to get shot to pieces, don't! Oh, I can't believe you're so abusive to Mark II. Otacon. All the time I put into this technology. Ugh. Otacon, are you angry? Don't you just, you just like, act like there's nothing but yourself. That's the only thing you think about. Uh, look, I'm sorry. I promise I'll be more careful about how I use the thing. Yeah, well, you better. Those guys really know how to put on a show. I'm sure it was old and decrepit already, but I've never seen a building go down like that. The militia fighting against praying mantis are mercenaries belonging to a small-scale local PMC. Most of them are from around here, but it was more than ethnic ties that motivated them to pick up their guns. The country suffers from chronic high unemployment. There are lots of households just barely scraping by. Kids that grow up in that environment don't have the chance to get a decent education. And there aren't enough opportunities for them to go abroad and find work, either. PMCs are one of the few options they have to earn a living. And for that, they go out and risk their necks. It's not a respectable trade by any measure. Still, for some reason, I can't bring myself to condemn them for it. It's complicated, you know? During the Cold War, this region was the site of irregular proxy wars fought between the two superpowers. Now that it's over, the ethnic conflicts that were simmering beneath the surface have erupted into full-scale civil wars. Even today, the political situation is fragile. The land and its people have been ravaged and exhausted by years of constant warfare. With food scarce and the economy near collapse, the country's barely being kept afloat by aid from developed nations. And despite all that, the current regime is still hiring PMCs to put down the anti-government militia, or terrorists, as they call them. I know security's a big issue, but come on. If you've got the money to buy bullets, you should be using it to buy your people bread. That's how a lot of people would put it, yes. <sighs> Makes sense to me. Notice the camouflage option on the Mark II's menu screen. 
Selecting it lets you manage the Octocamo when you need to adjust the settings on your suit, for example. The Octocamo has a manual mode where it sticks with one particular pattern, as well as an auto mode where it changes in real time to match the background. Pick whichever one is easiest for you to use. Snake, if you find there's not enough light to see with the naked eye, you can always use the solid eyes night vision mode. How you liking that iPod, Snake? They say certain types of music can help relieve stress. If you're feeling run down, why not take a break? Listen to a few tunes. Otacon. Yeah, I heard it too. A special forces unit with advanced gear. Who are they? Some kind of mercenary hired by the PMCs? Anyway, if you do run into those guys, don't get caught off guard. And Snake, remember that guy said one of them has UCAVs under his control. Right. One of his men picked up some pieces. That must be what they had in front of them. Looked the same as the one that bombed that building. They may be small, but they bite. Hard. You better be extra careful they don't see you. Removing the lock on a gun. Otacon, can they really do that? Sorry, don't know the specifics. Give me some time, I'll see what I can dig up. Let me know if you find anything. Will do. What's your take on Emoticon? I don't particularly like the guy. But it looks like we'll need his help with those ID guns. Sonny's been doing a little sleuthing for us. Drebin, a well-known gun launderer in war economy circles. He's a businessman who deals mainly in selling black market firearms to small PMCs and local militia. Somalia, the Balkans, Lebanon, Darfur, Chechnya, Timor, Peru, the Punjab, Kashmir, Colombia. This guy really gets around. How's he pull it off, anyway? You can create a non-ID gun by replacing the ID recognition chip with a counterfeit version. This enables you to bypass the ID recognition process and use the gun. The problem is that there's still a record of the chip being replaced on the system side. Drebin's an employee of AT Security. He must have connections on the inside erasing records for him. You think the Patriots are involved somehow? I'm not so sure. If the Patriots were running the system from behind the scenes, then a weasel like Drebin would be a real pain in their collective ass. Can he be trusted? Remember, Drebin's a green collar. He makes his living off the war economy. He doesn't let emotions get in the way of business, and he never gets his own hands dirty. The only thing he trusts is money. I share your concern, but what if we keep him at arm's length? Use him only to get intel and the supplies we need. Keep it strictly business. All right. Snake, we've got to meet up with our informants. The rendezvous point is farther up the street beyond that collapsed building. You'll need to pass through it to get to the other side. Snake. I'm not thrilled with the idea. In fact, I don't like it at all. But business is business. From now on, you'll be using the Mark II to deal with Drebin. Whenever you pick up a weapon that's the same kind as one you already have, any ammo inside will be added to your stock, and the weapon itself will be transferred to Drebin. He'll calculate the weapon's value and deposit the corresponding number of points into your account. Use those points to buy new weapons from him, or to turn ID guns into non-ID guns. I've added a Drebin shop option to the Mark II menu. Check it out. Snake, is that... a drum? And what, pray tell, do you plan to do with it? It's bigger than you are. That's the point, Otacon. It has to be at least this size. How else am I going to fit? Fit? Oh! I got it. If the enemy's after me, I can hide inside until they're gone. And, unlike a cardboard box, in a pinch I can roll into a quick getaway. Say, that does sound pretty good. To hide inside a drum, simply equip it as an item. To roll, press the crawl button to lie down on your side, then move as you normally would. Nice find, Snake. No wonder they call you a professional procurer on site. There are two gauges at the top left of the screen. The one on top is the life gauge. You're probably used to seeing it by now. If the gauge gets low, you can replenish it by eating. Or you can lay low in a safe place and wait for your octocamo suit to restore your life. 
The gauge underneath your life gauge is the psych gauge. When your psych gauge gets low, your hand will shake more when aiming a gun. Your life gauge will recover more slowly, and your radar will become less effective. In short, your overall combat ability will suffer. Hurry, Snake. The rendezvous with our informants is just up ahead. Check your radar to figure out which way to go. To press up against a wall, stand in front of it and press the action button. Move to the end of the wall while pressed up against it, and you can peek around the corner or do a jump out shot. You never know when these techniques are going to come in handy. When you're lying on the ground, press the aim button and move the left stick to the right or left to shift in that direction. Press the crawl button while you're shifting to roll. That'll enable you to move around without sticking out too much. When your mental condition suffers, your combat abilities do too. To put it another way, when your psych gauge gets low, you'll have trouble performing basic combat actions. The key to getting your psych gauge back up in these situations is stress management. Generally, that means finding some way to give your mind a break from the rigors of combat. You could find a nice, quiet place to rest or eat a meal. Sometimes it even helps to take in a pretty view. And some items may also be used to recover psych. By contrast, hanging around an unfavorable environment, a hot or smelly place, for example, will drain your psych faster. Always pay attention to the environment you're in. The rendezvous point is just up ahead. The building seems to be abandoned. It's not occupied by the PMCs or the militia. The rendezvous point is on the top floor. Check your radar to see which way to go, and use extreme caution. Snake, I'm picking up a weak radio signal emitting from the infrared sensors placed throughout the building. My guess is they're set up so that whoever planted them, our informants in other words, can monitor their operating status in real time. I strongly advise leaving those traps alone. The enemy sent in a squad to hunt you down. You've got to get out of there as fast as possible. There won't be any way out of the building until at least the second floor. Work with Merrill's team to find a way down and get to the exit. The exit's on a lower floor. Work with Merrill's team to get rid of anyone in your way. You need to get out of that building now. There's an exit on a lower floor if you can get down there. Fight past the enemy with Merrill's team and get to the bottom. Snake, are you watching Merrill's team? Yeah, they're incredible. The best of the best in special forces are pretty deadly, but Merrill's team is even better than that. They're like a well-oiled machine. Sons of the Patriots. What a system. I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad they're on our side. Then you better not make Merrill mad, for all our sakes. Huh. <laughs> no kidding. You gonna be all right? I mean, you two do have a history. Hmm. Otacon, I know where Liquid is. Yeah, I'm confirming the location. It's to the north of where you are. Meryl's really changed, hasn't she, Snake? She's a lot more self-assured. <laughs> I wonder how much of that has to do with the system. The senses you used to develop through extended training and experience can now be obtained without even working for them. Seems once you're under the system's control, you don't even need experience at all. It even beats that VR training that was all the rage a few years back. Yeah. The growing need for PMCs has led to the creation of a more reliable, cost-effective supply of elite soldiers. It's also made the child soldier phenomenon more problematic than ever. Can the nanomachines do anything to counteract post-traumatic stress disorder? Good question. They might provide a degree of psychological stability. You'd think so? That geek kid, Akiba. He was really starting to lose it. And technologically, the system should be able to optimize each soldier's personality traits. And that big guy... He didn't seem to be feeling any pain at all. Augmenting the soldier's existing experience and psychological fortitude. But a soldier's gotta have more than that. The times have changed, Snake. Just like Merrill. <sighs> Snake, hurry to the PMC camp. Based on what Merrill told us, Liquid should be there. Snake, start by going up to the surface. Look for a way out of the basement. 
Hey, Snake. That emblem on Merrill's uniform, that's Foxhound, isn't it? Yep. I thought Merrill was with the Zero One unit. I mean, I know she's attached to Foxhound and all, but still. Covert Special Forces units do this kind of thing all the time. They use emblems that don't mean anything, like skulls and stuff. Like disinformation? Mm -hmm, something like that. I wonder if that's really all it is. Maybe she's still got some lingering attachment. You think so? I meant to Foxhound. I knew that. It's okay if Meryl wants to cling to the past. I just want her to be happy, that's all. Hey, Snake! Since when did you learn how to use CQC? I got the training back when I was in Foxhound. But I never used it in actual combat. You had those skills all this time and never used them? Why? The uh, man who taught me was my former commander in Foxhound. Big boss? Never felt right using a technique learned from a man who'd betrayed his unit. Thinking back, CQC as a concept was way ahead of its time. Nobody was using it yet. Not the Green Berets, or the SEALs, or the CIA paramilitaries. And then earlier this year, the Pentagon declassifies Big Boss's file for some reason. All of a sudden, his story is the stuff of pop culture. Books, magazines, the net. And now people are taking another look at CQC. The war criminal, reinvented as a hero. Big Boss's exploits as a Cold War secret agent back in the 60s have made him a legend. <laughs> the less people know about the truth, the more they can fantasize. Is that why you finally decided to use CQC? Because it's no longer just his anymore? The CQC soldiers use nowadays is a pale imitation. They're learning from reading about it. I learned through doing, and there's a world of difference. Then you want to teach them the real thing. The way you learned from your fa- I mean, Big Boss. That's not it either. Some things aren't meant to be passed down to future generations. When some guy comes at me using that cookie-cutter imitation of CQC, my body just reacts naturally, that's all. Ah, oh, I get it. An eye for an eye. Well, maybe not quite. I reckon they'd lose more than just an eye when going up against you. Liquid is in the PMC camp just up ahead. We need to get to him as fast as we can, but the fighting between the militia and the PMCs is really heating up. You know what to do. Use the battle conditions to your advantage, and proceed with caution. Otacon, it looks like the militia have got themselves an armored tank. Yup. A BMP-3. It's an old Soviet-designed IFV. It's not quite up to MBT defensive standards, but it's got enough armor to protect it against medium-caliber machine gun rounds. The militia could use it as a barricade against PMC gunfire. Use it to your advantage to help you proceed without having to face the PMCs. Snake, use that IFV as a shield to help you get to Liquid's PMC camp. Looks like they just took out a BMP-3. <laughs> it was one of those PMC tank busters. Nice piece of work. I'll say. But now there's one less shield for you to use. Watch out for stray bullets. The enemy's not too discriminating. They're not getting me on a cheap kill. I'll watch my back. Those things just wipe the floor with the militiamen. Must be the special unit that wounded militiaman was talking about. And now the wreckage is blocking the way. Snake, head straight for Liquid's camp. Snake. There are more differences between the Militia and the PMCs than you may think. For one thing, the PMCs are flush with cash, so they usually have the latest gear. Uh, looks that way. Weapon systems, combat suits, tactical vests, communications equipment. All the latest toys. On top of that, they're running on the SOP system, which keeps them in constant contact with each other during battle. The Militia, on the other hand, are little more than amateurs, most haven't even had basic combat training. And their equipment is nothing to brag about either. They're just barely scraping by. Their weapons don't seem to be controlled by the system. The ones I've picked up work for me just fine. Right. But the PMC's weapons won't. You can steal their guns, but they'll most likely be locked and unusable. Remember that. 
just a little farther to Liquid's camp. Check your radar to see which way to go. Snake, these enhanced soldiers seem to be using some sort of device to cling to the walls. Doesn't look like they have spikes or suction cups. This is only a guess, but I think their gloves and boots might have some mechanism that employs van der Waals force. Uh-huh. It's a type of mutual interaction that occurs between two electrically neutral particles. Geckos use it to crawl up walls and across ceilings. Oh, that kind of gecko. But those things are a hell of a lot lighter than a human. Well, around ten years ago, I read about an experiment where they reportedly suspended an object weighing 100 grams using a 5 millimeter square piece of adhesive tape. Assuming the technology's advanced since then, I don't see why these guys couldn't be climbing all over the walls. Otacon, what about Vamp? How he ran up that support pillar in the big shell. You think that's how he did it? You mean, did he have this technology? He could have, yeah. So it wasn't that he had some freak supernatural powers. Hey, when technology starts to test the limits of our imagination, what's the difference? Snake, remember how I told you the militia were basically amateurs? Yeah. From what I've seen, though, they're holding their own. Not quite ready to lie down and give up, at least. Right. The militia have hired operators working for them. You're disguised as one now. They make for pretty good commanders in battle. <laughs> well, maybe you haven't noticed because you're not actually working as one, but those operators are all over the place, shouting out orders and giving signals. The militia's ability to organize themselves in battle largely depends on their presence. Heaven forbid one of those operators gets taken out. The chain of command would dissolve, along with any real combat effectiveness. Are those Gecko on that truck? I always pictured Gecko as these big, hulking things. But I guess they can fold up pretty small, too. Imagine that. I'll bet I could fit one through my front door if I tried. What do you think? Thinking about redecorating? Oh, come on. You don't think I'm that weird, do you? Snake, I've been doing some research. No. Ah, look. Those militia are generally made up of volunteers. But they're not just homegrown civvies who've been handed guns and told to fight. It looks like there's a locally based PMC. A small one, but it's there. So the militiamen you're seeing are most likely mercenaries hired by that PMC. Hmm. So you've got PMCs led by PMCs fighting PMCs. A real showcase for the war economy. This is the world we live in, Snake. It's kind of sad, isn't it? I knew it. Snake, you're here to kill Liquid, aren't you? That's the mission. Are you going to stop me? My mission is to inspect the PMCs. I'm not in a position to take action. All I can do is stand by and watch. I can't help you, understand? I'm a peacekeeper, here to keep order. Understood. Otacon, what the hell? That was... Vamp. I'm sure of it. I'll never forget that face. Those were PMC soldiers with him. Is he involved in Liquid's plan? We watched him die in Manhattan. Damn it, he won't leave us alone. Snake, could Vamp be immortal? Not a chance. This is the real world, not some fantasy game. I swear, the next time he shows up... Not now, Otacon. Right. I know. Snake, according to satellite imagery procured by Mei Ling, the facility where Naomi's being held is to the north, along a mountain road. I'm sending the location to your map. Mei Ling? What's she up to these days? Taking command of the Missouri, apparently. The Missouri? That's a World War II battleship. The museum contract in Hawaii expired some time ago. I hear it's now being used as a virtual training vessel. No kidding. Not for actual combat training, of course, but rather to get sailors used to seamanship on an analog vessel. Or so I hear. After the mess at Shadow Moses, Mei Ling kind of got put out to pasture. Hmm. Even so, making captain at her age, that's pretty impressive. Rumor has it she caught the eye of some lecherous old admiral who got her promoted. She always did have a thing for her older men. Hmm. Maybe it's too early to retire after all. 
Thinking of taking a little training on an analog vessel, Snake? Huh. No. At this point, I've got no need for any more training. Fair enough. Listen, Snake. When you get there, remember, the conflict between the PMCs and the Rebels has nothing to do with your mission. There's no reason for you to get involved or take sides. That said, creating some sort of impact on the battlefield could produce better conditions for sneaking. The Rebels are targeting the facility being used by the PMCs as a base. This is more or less the same spot where Naomi's being held. If you aid the Rebels, they might get rid of some of the PMCs and help carve a path for you to sneak in. That freak I just saw, with the tentacles, was it using the same octo-camo system as my suit? Yeah. I thought that technology was of your own design. Um, actually, I kind of based it on some design Sonny snagged off the net. And the data came from? DARPA. Huh. <laughs> so in other words, we're on equal ground technologically. Sorry, I guess I should have told you. And by the looks of things, they know I'm coming too. Yeah, it could be a trap. Stay sharp. Snake, I see you found yourself a uniform from the old regime's army. It's just like the ones the rebels are wearing. Yeah, just my size, too. The rebels are a heck of a lot less likely to shoot at you if you're wearing that uniform. Don't hesitate to put it on if you're feeling a little naked. I'll do that. Of course, you have to act the part, too. Don't forget to play nice. Don't worry. I'll behave. Naomi's lab is north of your present position. The direction of the lab is indicated on your radar. Use it to plan your next move. The low oxygen levels in this high-altitude mountainous area must be having a negative effect on the nanomachines. The PMCs are showing signs of unusually aggressive behavior. Watch your back, Snake. The rebel soldiers are in the plaza now, rounding up the prisoners they took in the last battle. Remember how I was telling you the PMCs are getting more and more prone to violence? Well... There's a fair chance this might not turn out so well for those rebels. Normally, I'd advise you to continue on with your objective, but I feel for those guys. Look, if you do decide to do the right thing, you'll have to take down those PMCs. It's your call, Snake. Hmm. The PMC the regime hired is French, isn't it? It sure is. Puvre armement. Octopus armaments. Why? On this battlefield ad I'm looking at, it's written in French. Les tentacules de la puvre pour votre guerre. It means something like arms of the octopus, arms for your war. Oh yeah, I forgot. Fluent in six languages. You know, I bet the octopus never saw it coming. Somebody using its limbs to design a wartime advertisement? You use what you can. That's what we humans do. Sounds like something a procure on-site expert would say. Is that so, Otacon? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Naomi's lab is to the north. Head north, Snake. Head for Naomi's lab. Follow the mark on your radar, Snake. You're still a long way from Naomi's research lab. The direction of the lab is indicated on your radar. Use it to plan your next move. Snake. You know the men and women in the rebel army were once regular soldiers in the national army. When the current regime seized power, they were either stripped of their ranks or left of their own accord. At any rate, the vast majority were in the army when the old regime implemented the SOP system. Hold on. You're saying they've got nanomachines in their bodies? Exactly. But when the regime changed, the system expunged their IDs. That's why they can't use ID guns and fight with naked guns instead. On the other hand, it also means the government can't control the rebels' actions through the system. Or you can look at it another way. If you get a weapon from the rebels, there's no need to involve Drebin. You can use it as is. Nice. I'll have to remember that. Snake, the gorillas you liberated are probably well-versed in local geography. Following in their footsteps might be the fastest way to get you where you need to go. Something to consider, anyway. Snake, there's someone I'd like you to meet. A member of the mission staff. A psychological counselor. Psychological counselor? A lot of soldiers can't handle the stress of battle. End up panicking. 
She'll be useful in helping you understand the mindset of both the PMC and rebel soldiers. She? Rosemary! Nice to meet you, Snake. This is Rosemary. She used to work as a data analyst at the Pentagon, but moved to combat support during the Big Shell incident. Uh, yeah. She was in charge of Jack's files, wasn't she? After that, she studied psychology. And now she's a counselor with CSP, the Combat Stress Platoon. Yeah, I hear psychological counseling's the hot field these days. Increased combat efficiency and productivity, all without ever picking up a gun. I'll be acting as your personal counselor on this mission. Since the passing of the new millennium, one of the most important issues facing today's military is the mental care of its soldiers. I can also provide advice on soldier psychology from a threat assessment perspective. Contact me anytime. I'll be standing by here at home with Roy, but I'm on a different circuit. The frequency is 147.79. Her advice will have a positive effect on your psych gauge. Survival on the battlefield depends on your psychological well-being. Lose your cool and your body stops doing what you tell it to. Even a veteran soldier like you. I know. Mind, body, technique. Some things haven't changed with time. When your psych is running low, ask her for advice. It'll help keep you in peak condition and focused on the mission. By the way, Colonel, isn't that your house? Well, yes. Then the woman you married, the one that Merrill was talking about. Is Rosemary, yes. Didn't I tell you before? News to me. What about Jack? Jack. Jack, from Foxhound. Codename Ryden. I seem to remember him being engaged to Rose. Oh, we lost all trace of him. Jack's gone. I used to work with the guy. He saved Sonny from the Patriots. He disappeared soon after that. What about you? Jack disappeared and you just moved in on Rose? I was consoling her over her loss. And one thing just led to another. She's young enough to be your daughter. Yeah, lucky me, huh? <laughs> now I see why Merrill was so disgusted. Merrill said something about me. Yeah, I believe her words were, I'll never forgive that womanizing piece of shit. I see. Colonel, you knew she was our informant in the Middle East, didn't you? Was it you who put her up to it? Yes. I used my connections in the army to get Merrill the job. You wanted your daughter someplace where you could keep an eye on her. Look, everybody involved in the incident at Shadow Moses either lost their job and status, or in the case of Merrill and Mei Ling, got brushed aside. Merrill wanted to make a comeback, a difference. We can't all be as strong as you, Snake. Some of us can't bear living like pariahs. Huh. Since Shadow Moses, I've been branded a criminal. I think of it as my own small way of making it up to my daughter, my own flesh and blood. In any case, call Rosemary if you ever need advice. Snake, look at those rebel soldiers over there. It looks like they're trying to sneak up on the PMC base, just like you are. You can find your own route if you want to, but it might be easier to just follow them. Or you might try inciting a battle between the PMCs and the rebels and slip past them in the confusion. You should consider fighting alongside the Rebels for a little while. It'll help soften up the PMC's defenses, which should work to your advantage when it's time to sneak in. In any event, choose whichever method you think is best given the situation and stick to it. Do you hear the birds, Snake? Yeah. I noticed a change in their song a while back. They're trying to warn other birds about some kind of disturbance. There must be people coming. If they get too close, the birds will stop calling and fly away. Good observation. Birds are nature's greatest security alarms. You should pay attention to how they sing and behave. What's on your mind? Just checking in. There doesn't seem to be any problem with your psych. So far, so good. Proceed with the mission. Got it. Snake, the gauge below your life gauge is your psych gauge. Yeah, you told me about that. Then you'll hear it again. The psych gauge affects the rate at which your life gauge recovers. In other words, how fast your wounds heal. It also greatly influences how well you perform various actions. 
When your sight gauge is full, your life recovers quickly and you shouldn't have any problems doing what you need to do. Remember, your body isn't the only thing driving your performance. Your mind is every bit as important. Hey, I don't let my mental state affect my combat efficiency. You may think that, Snake, but the truth is, you're... you're not as young as you used to be. Hmm. <laughs> Could've fooled me. It's your psych that's keeping you alive inside. So you better take it seriously. Keep a close eye on your psych gauge. All right, all right. Oh, hi, Snake. Rose. Good for you, Snake. You're taking great care of your psych. No worries on my end. Mm, glad to hear it. If you're that full of energy, there's nothing for me to worry about. You're doing fine, Snake. Go ahead and focus on the mission. Hello, Snake. What do you have for me, Rose? Hmm. You've got plenty of psych. You should be in good shape to complete the mission. All right, then. Snake, what's gotten into you? I mean, you know I'm always here for a talk as long as it doesn't interfere with the mission, but... Snake, your psych is right where it needs to be. Focus your energy on the mission. Good luck. How are things going, Snake? Dandy. It looks like your psych gauge is okay for now. Well, at least there's some good news. But remember you're in danger, Snake. Stay alert and focus on getting to safety. It's okay. I know you'll be fine. Don't give up. Sorry if I kept you waiting. <laughs> no problem. What's the situation? It looks like your psych gauge is okay for now. Well, at least there's some good news. But the enemy's on your tail, and it's putting you under a lot of stress. Find safety as soon as you can. It's okay. I know you'll be fine. Don't give up. Do you need something? Up for a quick psych analysis. But being sought by the enemy leads to considerable psychological pressure. Try and get back to safety as soon as possible. I know you can do it, Snake. Hang in there. It's Rose. What's the verdict? I see you've got plenty of psych left. Great. Thanks. Are you doing all right, Snake? <laughs> Hanging in there. Stay alert and focus on getting to safety. Snake, are you all right? You tell me. No problems with your psych gauge, I see. Cool. Hi, it's Rose. What's my status? Anything wrong, Snake? Just checking in. Let's see. Your psych is looking a bit low. And the enemy's after you, too. It'll be difficult to recover your psych in this state. Get to safety as soon as you can. I know you can do it, Snake. Hang in there. You seem to be having problems with your psych. And with the enemy on your trail, you can't concentrate on getting your psych back up. You'll have to find safety first. You're going to make it out of this. I know you will. How are things going, Snake? Dandy. You should try and up your psych. Snake? Got an update for me, Rose. And you're being pursued by the enemy. Not exactly the best conditions for recovering your psych. The sooner you can get to safety, the better. Who is this? Snake. That voice. There's an ambush ahead. Government and PMC troops. You could be shot from anywhere. Watch your surroundings. Look to the distance. Is this... Jack? Jack is dead. Snake. I'm at your side. Wait. That's a power station those PMCs are guarding. It's a key piece of infrastructure, so it's bound to be heavily defended. The Rebels will surely see it as a high-value target. When those two groups get around to fighting, it's not gonna be pretty. You've got a tough choice to make. Follow them, or find your own way around. Until now, the Rebels have been engaging the PMCs in an effort to capture the power station without damaging it. But looking at the way they've been fighting lately, I'm seeing a slight change in the Rebels' strategy. They don't seem as concerned about keeping the facility intact. Well, this was originally their land. Even if the infrastructure takes a few hits, as long as they regain control, they can always rebuild later. Right now, their top priority is thinning the PMC's ranks. At least, that's what it looks like from here. You could be right. They might even be trying to take out the power station now. Take it out? Yeah. Render the switchboard inoperative and you'll shut the whole place down. The PMCs are likely expecting that, and will fight tooth and nail to defend the facility. Watch yourself out there. Will do. 
This is Rose. How can I help? I need a psych check. Your psych is getting dangerously low. You need to recover it. I know. I know. Snake, are you okay? Your psych's looking awfully low there. Yeah. I can't seem to get out of this slump. You should find a nice, safe place to rest and replenish your psych. It may help to equip some Munya, too, if you have any. Munya? It'll help you to relax, and should help your psych gauge recover faster. Okay, I'll give it a try. Your psych is at an extremely dangerous level. You need to take immediate action to recover it. Got it. Snake, what makes you tense? Stressors, the factors that cause stress, can be divided into several types. They can be psychological, social, biological, chemical, or physical. In battlefield terms, that corresponds to the presence of enemies, the battlefield environment, biological and chemical weapons, and physical wounds and hunger caused by combat. Any of these factors can cause stress to build up. So you need to pay attention not only to your health, but also to your psych, especially when engaged in combat. You'll be putting yourself at risk if you lose any more psych. Take any steps necessary to recover it. Will do. Snake, you should try and recover your psych. I've already explained a number of ways to do it. Pick one that's convenient and get your psych back up. You've lost a large amount of psych. You'd better take care of that right away. Got it. It looks like your psych is down. Do what you can to change that by getting rid of stressors. I think you'd better stop and recover your psych before you go any further. Snake, I'm behind you 100%. Don't give up. Snake, I think you've got a lot of stress built up. Try to relieve some of it. It'll help your psych gauge. Rose here. How's it going? Super. You're starting to get pretty low on psych. Yeah, I know. Snake, your psych gauge is affected by the conditions you're in. Staying in a place that's too hot or too cold or being exposed to combat conditions for extended periods causes stress to build up in your body and mind. The more tension you've accumulated, the more your psych gauge decreases. As the gauge decreases, it starts to negatively affect your performance. Your hands start to shake, and your life gauge recovers more slowly. Vision gets blurry, and you can't make out your targets. All of these things impair your ability to complete the mission. So be sure and keep an eye on your psych gauge at all times. This is Rose. How can I help? I need a psych check. Your psych is in bad shape. You should really think about that. I'll look into it. You've lost quite a bit of psych. You ought to do something about that. I'm right. Take my advice. Work on building back your psych. Trust me, it'll make a big difference in your mission. Rose, you there? There's something I wanted to ask you. You're not hurt, are you? Hurt? What are you talking about? Uh, nothing. Just making sure. Forget I asked. What's the matter? I was catching a few minutes of shut-eye, and I had a dream. A dream where you were in an explosion. It seemed so real, I couldn't help but get a little worried. Relax, I'm alive. Death by explosion, huh? It's true. One blast and I'm off to meet my maker. Not all explosives are the stationary bomb type. For example, if you hear a pin being pulled out of a grenade, you know what's coming next. You need to be aware of these things. Yeah, I'll make a point of it. Thanks for looking out for me, Rose. Don't mention it. I'm impressed, Snake. You're keeping your psych up better than I expected. Maybe you were right about not needing my help. <laughs> Here's a good way to think about your psych gauge. Low psych equals high stress. So the best way to replenish your psych gauge is to relieve your stress. Being pursued by the enemy can be a tremendous source of stress. By the same token, staying out of sight and giving your body a rest relieves stress and allows the sight gauge to recover. Find a safe place where you can crouch or lie down and just lay low for a while. Also, just getting out of extreme heat or cold can have a positive effect on the gauge. Pay attention to how the sight gauge moves and find a stress relief technique that works for you. Yes, Snake? Just here for my checkup. Your psych is in excellent condition. Everything looks good to go. Great. Thanks. Eating replenishes more than just your stamina. It also helps your psych gauge recover. 
Since ancient times, military commanders have struggled with the problem of how to secure food for their men. How much soldiers get fed, not to mention how well, has a direct effect on morale. Back when wars were fought between absolute monarchies, the maximum distance an army could travel in a day was limited to the distance from one supply point to the next. The quality of the food is a major factor, too. During World War II, American battleships housed vending machines that were stocked with cigarettes, soft drinks, and ice cream. They called them gedunk bars. The phrase is still used by sailors and marines today. Mmm, ice cream. Tasty. Apparently, they even built special floating ice cream factories, capable of producing 5,000 gallons of ice cream an hour to feed soldiers on ships too small to have their own gedunk bars. They even had their choice, soft or hard. Napoleon once said, an army moves on its belly. He knew what he was talking about. Speaking of food, Snake, Colonel, we're in the middle of something here. Have you ever eaten rations from a country other than the U.S.? Of course I have. The U.N. recently held a ration swap meet between military attachés from each member state. It was a momentous development in the cultivation of mutual understanding of other countries' cuisine. Roy, this isn't really the time. On the contrary. I want you to hear this too, Rose. I've already heard it a hundred... You'll survive. Anyway, Snake, I did a taste test and found that French rations were generally the best. The Italians weren't bad either. And the Japanese stuff was much better than I expected. Really? That's wonderful. But everyone seemed to agree that the worst rations of all were ours. America for the win. All right. So what's your point? Yep, it must be nice to live in a country that knows how to cook. Those French rations. Delicieux. I wish you could have been there to try some snake. And, oh, uh, you too, Rose. Colonel, what exactly are you? Some of the best food I'd ever tasted, Rose. I'm sorry, Snake. Ever since he went to that swap meet, it's all he can talk about. You think he'd never had a decent meal in his life. No kidding. Huh. Wait a minute. Rose, who does the cooking at your house? Me. Roy doesn't... What are you getting at? Uh, nothing. Never mind. Colonel. Mm. My sympathies. It's appreciated, Snake. I actually like those American rations. Need something? What's up, Doc? Your psych is looking good right now. Nothing to worry about, so far as I can see. <laughs> good. Snake, you're a smoker, aren't you? Not this again. <laughs> Just hear me out. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't want someone smoking in front of my kids, of course. But from a stress management perspective, smoking is obviously an effective relaxation measure for people like you. It actually raised your psych, didn't it? It... Uh, yeah. But even so, I'm not going to downplay its effects on your health. Your life gauge actually went down, didn't it? And the smell of tobacco can attract the enemy. Yeah, I guess you're right. Think carefully before lighting up, Snake. I'll leave it at that. Snake, you should be careful about how much weight you're carrying. I'm sure a big, strong guy like you can carry a considerable amount of gear, but the stress of lugging heavy loads around can have a negative effect on your mental state, causing your sight gauge to go down. But you never know what kind of equipment I'll need handy. I'm not saying you shouldn't ever carry a lot of gear. I'm just saying it has its drawbacks. That's all. You shut down the station, Snake. Nice job. <laughs> Could have done it in my sleep. Now that they've lost one of their bases, the regime troops will be on the defensive. This is your opportunity to slip through. The battle at the power station seems to have died down a little. But the situation hasn't changed. Whoever wins has got the area in lockdown. So, Snake, proceed with caution, and don't let anybody see you. There doesn't seem to be any fighting going on there, but the enemy's out on patrol. Make sure they don't spot you. Snake, can you hear me? This is Jack, isn't it? I am Raiden. Jack is no more. Where are you now? I'm right beside you. Raiden, where have you been all this time? What have you been doing? On a mission, finding something for someone. Finding what? The corpse of Big Boss. What? 
I was asked to do this in exchange for Sonny's location. Liquid? No. The leader of a small resistance group. Her followers call her Matkapluku. Matkapluku. Big Mama. <clears throat> we'll finish this later. I'll follow your trail and catch up with you. Wait. What about Big Boss's body? It's with her now. Her. What's going on, Snake? Rose, I just got a call from Raiden. It sounds like he's close by. Jack? Yeah. Did... did he seem okay? Yeah, as far as I could tell from his voice. Really? Uh, that's great. Snake, I have a favor to ask. What? Don't let him know I'm involved in this operation, okay? I think it would be best to just leave him alone for now. What happened between you and Jack? After the Big Shell incident, he became unstable. Memories began to resurface from his childhood when he fought for Solidus in the Liberian Civil War. And in the midst of all of that, the baby we had together, it, it hadn't even been born yet. Jack slowly stopped coming home. And when he did, he'd be dead drunk, sometimes covered in cuts and bruises. Roy was worried he was Jack's commanding officer, but Jack just avoided him. I was all alone, and Roy was so kind to me. He's the one who encouraged me to become a counselor. I know it sounds like I'm making excuses, but I needed to get over it, to move on with my life. I'm worried about him, of course, but I'm also afraid of him. All right. I'll keep my mouth shut. Thank you, Snake. Snake, you're now moving through a marsh. The swampy ground makes for poor footing, but all those tall rushes will help keep you hidden. Looks to have lots of other places you can hide, too. Snake, let's go over swimming. First, press the X button to submerge yourself. While underwater, use the left stick to move. To change directions, use the left or right stick. To surface, just swim upward. Snake, you're now passing through a salt pan. Groundwater saturated in halite springs to the surface, then basks in the sunlight to produce salt. Deep red earth encrusted with sparkling white salt. It's quite a sight. As you can see, though, the view is a little too good. One false move and you'll be spotted. You better be extra careful as you move through there. You're now at a supply depot. It's a pretty run-down old building, but part of it houses rebel prisoners, so don't expect security to be light. You're in a supply depot, and it looks like most of the rebel prisoners here have already escaped. So you're pretty much done there, aren't you, Snake? We've got to hurry to Naomi's lab. Wrap it up and let's get going. Snake, it's just a little farther to the lab. Don't get sloppy now and get yourself caught. It's an armored bulldozer. They're gonna use it to break down the gate. Snake, that's your ticket inside. Wait for them to bring it down and then charge on in. The lab where they're making Naomi do her research is somewhere inside. First things first, find a way to get inside that mansion. The rebels have pushed their way inside. This is the PMC's last stronghold. They'll stop at nothing to defend it. This battle's only gonna get bloodier from here. And the bloodier, the better. For me, at least. That's only if you make use of the situation. Be ready for anything. Naomi should be somewhere inside the mansion grounds. Use your radar to guide you to her location. There should be a passageway leading to Naomi's lab. Look around for it, Snake. The video Naomi sent us contained data pinpointing the location of her lab. Naomi's waiting. Find her. Snake, you're right next to where Naomi is. But according to the data she provided, your elevation is just a little bit off. She must be up above you. Is there a ladder or something? If there is, use it to get up there. They're taking Naomi again. Don't let them stand in your way. Take them out and go after her. Naomi's lab is divided into multiple rooms and corridors. Make use of the lab's layout to give yourself cover. The enemy seems to be using disturbance tactics. 
They're trying to throw you off guard, create opportunities to strike. Watch for signs of attack and be on the lookout for incoming enemies. Your Octo Camo can help hide you from enemy eyes. Use it to blend in with the background when the enemies lost sight of you. It'll give you a critical edge in battle. Let a battle drag on too long and it'll start to take its toll on your sight gauge. Keep that in mind as you fight. Be sure to keep an eye on your sight gauge when engaging the enemy. You'll get through this, Snake. How's your sight level? Are you holding up okay? You've got to break through there or you'll never complete the mission. Hang in there, Snake. Snake, Octopus's suit seems to work the same way as your Octo Camo. It'll use mimicry and traps as weapons against you. Stay focused. Don't be deceived by its disguises. Snake, the radar reacts when the enemy's presence is strong. Keep an eye on the radar at all times. Got that? Technically, your gear's about on par with the enemy's so it won't be the deciding factor in this battle. Be aware of changes in your surroundings. Octopus may try and mimic things you'd never expect. Be particularly mindful of things you don't remember having seen before. Otacon, doesn't that enhancement suit remind you of anything? You mean those arm-like extensions? I think we both got a pretty good idea. An offshoot of the battle suit Solidus War. You think the BMBs are connected to him somehow? I doubt it. But I'll tell you one thing. They're in an entirely different league than the other PMCs. Even at medium range, those arms could deliver a nasty blow. Watch out for them, and keep your distance. Will do. That beast seems to laugh at everything. At this point, no matter what you say to her, she'll only respond one way. The symptoms resemble those seen in Ganser Syndrome. It's a type of dissociative disorder characterized by irrelevant responses to the situation at hand. It often manifests itself in soldiers under extreme battlefield stress. You mean she's not having a good time out here? I doubt it. I'm starting to wonder if she might not have some kind of deep-seated psychological trauma. You may think you've got more important things to worry about, but your psych level can have a significant impact on the course of battle. Keep an eye on it. Snake, letting your sight get too low will only lead to physiological problems that can make combat more challenging. Always mind your sight level, even while engaging the enemy. Those spherical weapons Octopus is throwing. Floating bombs, I guess you'd call them. They seem to be custom made. I've never seen anything like them. No kidding. They get a beat on me and hone right in. Hard to shake them off. I think they're a type of MAV. Micro-air vehicles. Sort of like a distant cousin of the remote control missile. How do I stop them? From what I've seen, there's a time lag between when they latch onto the target and detonation. You can use that lag to your advantage. Shake them off before they detonate. They don't seem too sticky, so rolling on the ground ought to do the trick. Or you could shoot them out of the air before they hit you. You can do it. Listen, Snake, if one of Octopus's floating bombs sticks to you, roll around on the ground to shake it off. Otacon, what's wrong? Why are you calling me over there? Huh? What are you talking about? I didn't say anything. It was you. I'm telling you, I didn't call you. This is no time for jokes. You're supposed to be fighting Octopus. Come on! Uh, uh. Hey, Otacon! Otacon! What the hell were you thinking, sending me over there? Hold on a minute. I didn't tell you to go anywhere. Thanks a lot. I just got nailed by a trap. Are you trying to get me killed? Now, now, wait a second, Snake. Mimicry is a way of making your opponent see something they're not really seeing. It can be very effective in rendering your opponent psychologically vulnerable. It's easy to think she couldn't possibly be here. Be careful you don't fall into that trap. From the looks of it, she's unarmed. And yet, she's coming closer. I don't know what she's up to, but watch out, Snake! Watch out for her when she comes at you, Snake. She's deadly at close range, just like those enhanced soldiers. Yo, Snake. Looking good today. Drabin, what do you want? That's cold, man. And here I was about to tell my very best customer about face camo. Face camo? That camo skull cap you just picked up from Tentacle's shell. 
It utilizes the same kind of technology as your Octocamel suit. Using the two together can get you even better results. I'd hang on to it if I was you. Doesn't fit. It's not my size or shape. Yeah. Looks like it could use a bit of tailoring before you can sport it. Not my line of work, but... Ain't you got a buddy who specializes in that kind of thing? Hmm. Somebody's done their homework. Hey, is my job. Is that the real reason you injected me with those nanomachines? To spy on me? I prefer the term customer data management myself. Driven. Relax. It's strictly confidential. I ain't gonna share it with anybody. Then what did you mix a virus in with the nanomachines for? Virus? A certain virus was detected in my body. Are you saying it wasn't in the nanomachines you injected? Look, you do know there are other folks who could have done this to you. And besides, what would I gain from infecting you? Better for me that you're out there kicking ass on the battlefield. I was watching you, Snake. You're a real piece of work. Never thought I'd meet the man who could take down Laughing Octopus single-handedly. <sighs> she just kept on laughing. Now, why do you suppose that is? <sighs> Something in her past. You got it. She's from a village in Scandinavia. Little seaside hamlet known to all the locals as the Devil's Village. Place wasn't known for devils, though. It was known for octopus. See, this was one of the few places in Europe where they ate octopus customarily. Anyway, there's this cult of crazies who for some reason hate the village with a passion. Then, when she was just a teenager, things get bad. These nutcases get their hands on some weapons and attack the village. Overnight, her sleepy little fishing town becomes a war zone. They round up all the villagers and execute them one by one. Except for that girl. They had something else planned for her. Something a whole lot worse than dying. Calling her the devil's child, they forced her to do the kind of thing you'd expect from one of Lucifer's own. After they made her torture her family and friends, they made her kill them. The whole time they were forcing her to laugh, howl like some sort of demon. Like she was enjoying it. What was she gonna do? Say no? They'd kill her, too. So she let fear take control and did exactly as they told her. She butchered the bodies of the ones she loved and laughed while she did it. And as she bathed in their blood, it gradually turned from deep red to jet black. To her, it looked like the ink of an octopus. The experience scarred her deep. Ever since then, she hasn't stopped laughing. Only... That ain't really laughter. Why are you telling me this? You expect me to feel sorry for her? No. I know you got no room for that stuff in your world. And besides, this is war. Right? In a way, though, I guess it was the right thing to do. What was? Fighting you cleansed her mind. All right, enough chit-chat. There's other beasts out there in them woods. Watch your back. Snake, have you lost sight of the target? Whenever something moves, it leaves a trail behind. Track and find Naomi's trail. I'm not like Big Boss. Tracking isn't my strongest suit. When did you get so good at it? After saving Sonny, I drifted around the globe. In Alaska, a tribal elder taught me some scouting techniques. Drifted? You never went back to see Rose? Rose? She doesn't exist. No. Rose and I live in different worlds, different times. Her world has no place for someone like me. My place is here on the battlefield. Huh. Listen, Snake. Scouting is based on the principles of hunting. There are two fundamentals. Awareness and tracking. Awareness? Awareness refers to locating a trail by paying careful attention to your surroundings. Tracking means to follow that trail. Your target's trail could be footprints, a branch they broke along the way, bent grass trampled underfoot. You need to feel for clues using all your senses. Sound, smell, touch, the direction of the wind. 
Watch how the animals move. Listen for unusual bird calls. These are signs that someone may be disrupting the environment nearby. You sound like a ninja. Exactly. Ninja are the ultimate scouts. If your enemy is a skilled scout, they'll be doing the same thing. You may be the hunter, but you are also the hunted. To avoid enemy detection, move slowly, little by little. Don't disturb the air around you. Try to make as little noise as possible. Your pursuers will be doing the same, trying to sneak up on you without a sound. If you can't pick up the trail with your naked eye, switch the solid eye to infrared mode. That will enable you to see Naomi's footprints and any enemies lying in ambush. Switch the solid eye to infrared. Got it. But the sound it makes while engaged could end up giving your position away. So don't leave it on for too long. All right. Listen to your heart. Trust your senses as much as you can. And you will find Naomi's trail. I'll give it a shot. Naomi's left a clear trail for you to follow. Use Raiden's advice to help figure out where she was taken. The enemy's probably setting up ambushes ahead. Keep an eye on your radar for signs of enemy presence. An explosive trap. If you'd triggered it, not only would you have sustained damage, the sound would have put the enemy on alert. Watch your step. Don't panic if you lose track of Naomi's footprints. Remember what Raiden told you. When a man walks through the woods, he leaves all kinds of traces behind him without even knowing it. Keep your eyes peeled for those traces, and you're sure to find them. Snake, you remember what Raiden was saying about scouting? Well, I did a little research of my own. The scouting he was talking about has a slightly different nuance than the reconnaissance scouting commonly referred to in the military. Makes sense. I kind of got that feeling from the way he was talking. The word scout, as he used it, originally referred to Native American warriors. I, on the other hand, prefer to see the concept as being rooted in their attitudes towards nature. To know nature, study it, fear it, love it, to be one with it. As I understand it, the true essence of scouting lies in that way of life. The basis of scouting is awareness. Take, for example, a hunter tracking an animal. The hunter is surrounded by clues that tell him about his prey. Footprints, bent grass, broken branches, shifts in the air, things that are out of place. But they only speak to the tracker if he notices them. Some Native American tribes have long been able to detect even the most minute details because they develop those senses from early childhood by living in nature. They use all five of their senses, placing great importance on sensing through the skin and sometimes go shirtless even in winter. It's said there are many different ways to feel the same wind. These things may seem foreign to you and I, but for them, it's a way of life. Hmm. A little too abstract for me. Yeah, me too. Maybe Raiden's reached a level of enlightenment we haven't. Maybe. Something to ask him next time our paths cross. Snake, you'll want to pay attention to birds and animals, too. If you see a bird suddenly take off, or an animal scurrying away, it's a sign that something's amiss. When a person makes a depression in the ground with their foot, there's a temperature difference between that print and the surrounding earth. With your solid eyes night vision mode, you can detect that slight difference and see the footprint. You need to look at more than just the shape of the footprints. Don't assume you're on the right track just because the print matches the target's shoes. Take a closer look. Imagine the target actually on top of the print. Think. Is the depth of the print consistent with Naomi's weight? Does the stride, straddle, and pitch match her walk? Pay attention. Don't let the hunted fool the hunter. Snake, the Mark II's microphone is picking something up. Sounds like a helicopter rotor. Maybe there's a heliport nearby. I'm pretty sure you've reached the forest's edge, Snake. The exit to the heliport should be close by. Find it. Snake, you've got to get to the plaza beyond the market. I'll be waiting there with the chopper. All you have to do is get there in one piece. Those soldiers chasing you. 
The emotional patterns they're displaying are definitely not normal. Intense anger, fear, sadness, all clear off the charts. What in the world happened to them? Snake, right now you've got to keep your focus. Make sure you don't get thrown off. Get to safety as quickly as possible. Snake, the chopper is almost ready for takeoff. We're waiting for you in the plaza beyond the market. Make sure Naomi gets here safely. You're almost to the plaza, Snake. Just a little farther. Watch your sight gauge and hang in there. Snake, hurry and get across the market. The chopper's waiting. Run! Snake, you're almost there. Raiden's keeping the enemy at bay. Now's your chance to make a run for it. Cross the market to the chopper. Just a little farther. Dr. Emmerich's waiting for you in the chopper. Just forget about the sight gauge for now. Get to the chopper. You're almost at the chopper. Run, Snake, run. Otacon, they've seen this face too. Yeah, it might have been added to the PMC's blacklist as well. And Merrill was acting kind of strange. Things are going to get hairy once the American suppression troops get here. We'd better get to Big Boss's corpse, and fast. But first, we've got to find Big Mama. Snake, let's go over what we know so far. The streets are under curfew. The only people you'll find out there now are PMC soldiers and members of the Resistance. Yeah, I thought it looked a little too quiet to be a tourist attraction. The Resistance members are scheduled to convene at Big Mama's hideout. So our best course of action is to follow their lead. When you find the Resistance, tail them. Let them lead you to Big Mama. But how exactly am I supposed to find this Resistance? The PMCs have laid a dragnet for Resistance members that covers the entire town. They're using SOP to notify each other by radio of any info collected during their searches. By intercepting those signals, you should be able to reach the Resistance members' locations in real time. Intercept their communications? How do I do that? I've provided you with a new device for just that purpose. To hijack PMC communications, open the item window and select the signal interceptor. The interceptor constantly monitors PMC voice and data transmissions. When you've got the signal interceptor equipped and you hear the PMC's chatter about the resistance, check your map. It should display the location. Got it. Oh, and Snake, I think we've found a way to treat Raiden. Really? Yeah, we got in touch with Dr. Madnar. Naomi and Sonny are on their way now. They'll be all right on their own. They're a few clicks north of where you are now. It's a non-combat zone, so there won't be any checkpoints. There's even a dialysis machine. It'll take some time, but I think he'll be okay. Good. Anyway, you need to hurry and make contact with Big Mama. I got it. If Liquid gets his hands on that corpse, it's all over. Follow the Resistance's lead. Snake, the Resistance doesn't know anything about you. With the city under curfew, well, if they see an unfamiliar face tailing them, they'll assume you're with the government and attack, or else just run away. Whatever you do, make sure they don't notice you. The thing the Resistance fears the most is the government learning the location of their hideout which means that if the PMC's alert level is any higher than normal, the Resistance won't head home under any circumstances. It's too risky, and that hideout is too valuable. Keep that in mind. To find the Resistance, check your radar for signs of their presence. You could also try intercepting communications from Ravensword, the local PMC, to identify a place where they're likely to be found. Snake. That area is under surveillance by PMC security patrols. You don't need me to tell you to watch out for them. If they see you, you'll be too busy engaging them to tail the resistance. If you see your resistance target getting arrested, don't give up. They'll be taken to a PMC guardhouse for interrogation. While they're being taken there, help resistance members get away by taking out their PMC escorts. Otacon. It's like a PMC convention here. It all started six months ago. An American company was planning an oil pipeline, and the current pro-U.S. government approved PMC units to be stationed in the country to provide security during construction. This brought tensions between the government and the anti-U.S. opposition to a boiling point. And then, a riot. 
presumably instigated by the opposition, broke out near the U.S. Embassy. The PMC suppressed the riot, placing the government directly in Washington's front pocket. Almost overnight, they opened up this country to a large-scale hunt down of the resistance. And now, the entire transportation network has been shut down, with checkpoints everywhere. That's the official story, anyway. Hmm. The riot that the opposition supposedly started? I suspect it was all part of a conspiracy. The units executing the actual operation are part of Liquid's own PMC. And the resistance group they're trying to flush out is led by Big Mama. The resistance also happens to have Big Boss's body in its possession. Seems as though Liquid was the one pulling the strings. He must have incited the riot to frame Big Mama, creating a scenario that allowed him to bring in the big guns to recover that body. I doubt politics has anything to do with any of this. Sounds like Liquid, all right. It does. Now, Snake, you know the drill. We need to get to Big Mama before they do. My sentiments, exactly. Don't worry if you lose sight of your resistance target, or if they get arrested and you can't save them. You'll have other opportunities. This city is Big Mama's home base. There's got to be more than one or two of her men hanging around. Just keep your eyes peeled. They're bound to be others. If the PMCs find anybody other than one of their own, they'll dispense with the niceties and take them straight in for interrogation. So if your resistance target gets, or is about to get, arrested, take out their PMC captor. But try to do it in a way that doesn't make it obvious they've been attacked. You might want to try putting them to sleep. Snake, I need you ready to respond if the resistance gets in trouble, okay? When your resistance target looks like they're about to be detected, try using yourself as bait to distract the PMCs, giving him a chance to slip away. Knock on a wall or throw an empty magazine. Always be ready to take the appropriate action if the need arises. Stay focused on your target. Don't lose sight of him. Lose his trail and you'll have to search for another resistance member. Get your act together, Snake! You're supposed to be tailing them, not harassing them. Snake, what are you doing? We need them to lead us to Big Mama's hideout. Don't harm the Resistance. Guess we'll have to find another Resistance member to follow. Check your radar for signs of their presence. Or you can listen in on PMC radio communications. They might tip you off to the location of a Resistance member. Knock it off, Snake. You've got to keep a low profile. What if they spot you? Snake, do not kill the Resistance. They're our only means of finding Big Mama's hideout. Okay, seriously, Snake. Let's think this through. Knock it off, Snake. Are you trying to abort this mission? Snake! Fine, do whatever you want. Just don't forget what we're here for. What the snake? Rose, something's going on. I've been getting this weird feeling. Like I died once already. And it was from a gunshot. Just seeing an enemy carrying a gun has been putting me on edge. Snake, your decades of experience might be trying to tell you something. Maybe it's a warning that the bullet that will finally kill you is coming when your back is turned. Tell me. What would you do if you saw a teammate engaging in risky behavior? Say, recklessly charging the enemy, or letting their mind wander in the middle of a firefight? I'd tell him not to get himself or me killed. Well, think of it this way. There's another you inside your subconscious that's telling you the same thing. Ah, <sighs> I see. Get back to the basics. Use the right stick to look for the enemy. Move cautiously and stay out of sight. I should start listening to my other me. Exactly. Take care of yourself out there, Snake. That resistance member's been arrested. Take out the PMC escorts and help him get away. Liquid will stop at nothing to get Big Boss's body. Work with the resistance fighters. Make sure that van gets out of there in one piece. The enemy is after Big Boss's body. They'll probably hold back from attacking the van to avoid damaging the body, but they'll throw everything they've got against you and the other escorts. 
It's game time, Snake. You've got to hold them off. The safety of that van depends on how well you fight to protect it. There'll be enemies waiting in ambush, too. You'll need to go ahead, wipe them out, and clear a path. Snake, I know you must be reeling from everything Big Mama told you, but you've got to get a hold of yourself and focus on bringing Big Boss's body to safety. Protect that van. It's going to take more concentration than usual to attack from a moving bike, and hitting your targets will be that much harder. So keep your hands steady by preventing drops in your sight gauge. Damn it! We lost the van! Yeah, and to top it off, there's some monster crows flying around here. Looks like the tourists have been feeding these guys. They're pretty damn big. We'll just have to head to the rendezvous point and pray that the van is safe. Snake! Don't let your guard down! Take those guys out and open up the road! Hang in there, Snake! You're almost to the rendezvous point! Shake those guys off your tail! I don't know much about motorcycles, but it's clear Big Mama's amazingly talented with that bike. It's like danger doesn't even register with her. One false move, though, and you're both done for. That's part of the thrill. She may be affected by what's known as Rider's High. I've heard of Runner's High. It's a similar phenomenon. Beta endorphins are secreted inside the brain while you run, creating a feeling of intoxication. In other words, a psychological high. Right. I've heard of that. Some motorcyclists have actually reported experiencing the same sort of sensation. It hasn't yet been confirmed psychologically, but that high could make you oblivious to danger. That may explain why she's driving like nothing can stop her. Sounds like a combat high. Kind of wish I wasn't riding shotgun, though. In a combat high, your brain overdoses on adrenaline, not endorphins. But don't worry, Snake. As far as I can tell, she's got skills. And she deserves your faith. Don't relax just yet. You've still got a ways to go. Don't forget to take care of your sight gauge, too. This beast seems to be seething with rage. Anger causes us to lose self-control, making it the most dangerous emotion of all. This makes her extremely dangerous, Snake. Be careful. Snake, don't forget that your ability to fight is affected by your psych level. No matter how tough your enemy, you need to keep an eye on your psych gauge at all times. Those sliders will sometimes leave her side and operate independently, most likely acting as a remote scouting platform. If you see a slider flying on its own, don't hesitate to shoot it down. That should reduce the beast's situation awareness and tilt the odds in your favor. Snake, those sliders are equipped with searchlights. Don't get caught in the beam, or they'll spot you right away. The beast's attacks are taking a heavy toll on the surrounding structures. As more of them are reduced to rubble, you'll have fewer places to hide. Time is not on your side, Snake. You need to finish this thing, fast. Keep your distance, Snake. Don't let her get too close. Snake, she may have shed her suit, but she's still consumed by anger. Anger begets anger. It's a vicious cycle. Don't get caught up in it. Stay away from her. Way to bring that bird down, Snake. Drebin. And you got yourself a souvenir, too. A grenade launcher. Nice. That's a real user-friendly weapon. Not much use to me without an ID, though. I laundered this one free of charge. What's the catch? Only that you give it to me when you're done with it. A weapon with that many decades of rage stored up inside it? Now that's a collector's item. How old was she? I'd say about 20. But she had years of soldiers' rage hidden away in that youthful body of hers. Soldiers? Yeah, the soldiers of Ake. A place that hasn't seen peace in a long, long time. She was captured by one side or another, and kept caged up like an animal, along with God knows how many other kids. Anonymous violence. Exactly. It's unknown whether her captors were with the government or the rebels. In any case, they got their kicks by abusing these helpless little kids day after day after day. That constant barrage, that battlefield rage, slowly built up inside their bodies, their minds. 
The kids tried to keep each other's spirits up, always clinging to the hope that someone would come to their rescue, barely surviving off of scraps of food. But those soldiers didn't stop. They called the kids parasites and shit-eating ravens. Beat them even harder. Then one morning, the soldiers just up and left, leaving the surviving kids to be eaten alive by the birds. Almost like one of those sky burials. One by one, their bodies were picked apart by raven's beaks, until finally the flock came for her. But by some miracle, their beaks cut her bonds instead. And like that, she was liberated. In that instant, she was filled with an uncontrollable rage, and it smothered her soul. She ripped the ravens pecking at her to pieces, and then went after the soldiers. And when she finally caught up with them, she waited until nightfall like a hunter awaiting its prey. They say that when a raven cries, a man dies. And that's exactly what happened that night. Screeching and cawing, she killed every last living being in the camp both the soldiers and the civilians they'd enslaved. In her eyes, there was no longer a difference. The cruelty her friends had suffered, the pain and humiliation she'd endured, hers was the distillation of the rage that decades of war had imparted on those soldiers. Hmm. It was her strength and her greatest weakness. You're something else, Snake. You managed to cleanse Raven of her rage. No, seriously. You're the seed of war. In fact, I'd say you might even be war itself. Draven. Maybe it's still too early to tell. You've still got half the B&B core ahead of you. Keep your eye on the ball, pal. Snake, there's next to zero visibility there. You may experience complete whiteouts. You might even end up bumping heads with a gecko. Proceed with extreme caution. The heliport is to the west. You know what to do. Snake, as I'm sure you're aware, Shadow Moses Island is an extremely harsh environment. Staying out there in that raging blizzard will take a severe toll on your psyche. More than ever before, the success of this mission depends on you taking the proper measures to maintain your psyche. Don't forget that. Look, there's the tank hangar. It sure brings back memories, doesn't it? I know it's all ancient history by now, but do you remember how you snuck into the hangar last time? I seem to remember the front hangar door being shut back then because of a blizzard just like this one. Yeah, there's two ducts that lead inside, an upper and a lower one. I picked one and used it to sneak in. Well, now you've got three ways to get in. Lucky you. Big Boss's body has fallen into Liquid's clutches. We can't let him get his hands on Rex, too. We have to get to the underground escape route where Rex is stored before they do. I'm setting your radar to point towards the target. Check it if you need to get your bearings. Shadow Moses is an uninhabited ruin now. There aren't any human soldiers stationed here, but I am picking up unmanned machines. Judging by their signature, they're probably a part of Liquid's army. I know you're getting pretty used to fighting them by now, but don't let your guard down. The gecko appear to be designed for high mobility, even in cramped urban environments like this one. Yeah, you're telling me. Their leg's main drive uses artificial muscle tissue, genetically engineered from the cloned ES cells of ungulate embryos. This gives them quick response times and a high output to weight ratio. Basically, the gecko have the legs of a star athlete. That's what makes them so agile. But it's also their weak point. Those things may have an amazingly high output, but they're also deployed in limited indoor search and destroy operations, so there's a limit to how heavy they can make the frames. Otherwise, they'd drop right through the floor. To keep its weight down, the gecko's defensive armor is concentrated on the head, where the central computer is housed. The legs aren't defenseless, but by comparison, they're a pretty soft target. In other words, targeting their legs should at least slow them down, right? Exactly. Keep it in mind. It could save your life. Keep going north and enter the tank hangar. I'll let you decide the best COA. Taking the duck, eh? Still remember where the exit is? Yeah, I'll be fine. 
way I remember it, these ducks aren't that complicated. And I had some friends to show me the way. Friends? Friends. Little furry ones. L little furry? <laughs> Never mind. Snake, hurry through that duct and get inside the hangar. To get to the canyon to the north, go through the back door of the hangar. Remember the mission, Snake. We've got another weird one here, Otacon. Ah, the little three-legged, uh, well, three-armed machine. Actually, I was in touch with Nastasha just recently. She told me about a rumor making its way around the military analyst community. Nastasha Romanenko. And? Gecko are being deployed in more and more urban counter-terrorism operations. In the process, they've encountered a number of problems. One of them is size and weight. Compared to other types of armored weapons, Gecko are relatively small and light, but they're still a bit too big to be effective in indoor search and combat operations. So the manufacturer, AT Corp, developed a new, smaller UGV based on the Gecko archetype for just that kind of mission. And the latest word is, they're about to start field testing. And that's what these things are? More than likely. That's all the information I have. The very existence of these things is still top secret. Pint-sized gecko, huh? Dwarf gecko. I doubt they're heavily armed. But remember, these things are designed to support gecko during indoor combat. Best to assume they're capable of some form of attack. Hmm. Maybe so. But they're still just machines. True. But that doesn't mean you can take them lightly. Be careful, Snake. Snake. I know it's easy to get nostalgic about this place, but we really need to get to Rex. Head north. Snake, what are you doing in there? Just reminiscing. Last time I was here, there was this nice stash of weapons and items. Thought I might get lucky again, and sure enough, I was right. You mean you found something? Hey, yep. Okay, just remember, we need to get a move on. Right. I'll be done here in a sec. Rose, got a sec. Well, this is a surprise. What's the occasion? I've been having these dreams, where I get shot and die. I'm sneaking around and suddenly someone shoots me from behind. Or I'm in a gun battle and I get shot through the heart. You've faced being shot at countless times before, haven't you? So? In psychology, dreams are interpreted as messages from your subconscious. They may be trying to tell you that if you keep this up, you'll die like you do in your dreams. So, it's telling me not to repeat the mistakes I've made in my dreams. Okay. I'll have to be more careful when I see enemies with guns. Maybe spend more time sneaking around their backs, especially when there's shooting going on. That sounds like a good plan. Be careful, Snake. Hey, Snake. Isn't this where you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Raven and his tank? Tell me again, how did you take that thing down, anyway? How? Uh, well... Grenades. That's it? You didn't use an anti-tank missile or something? Didn't have one. Your technique is kind of... Well, how do I put this? Archaic, when it comes to fighting tanks. Honestly, I don't think it'd work on today's main battle tanks. Well, that's how I did it. What do you want me to say? You know... I asked an active duty army officer once, if an infantryman had to take on a tank one-on-one, -on -one, how should he do it? And what was his answer? Don't. He swore there's no way in hell a single infantryman could take down a tank by himself. Huh. Interesting. I always suspected there was a little something crazy about you, Snake. But hearing that story, now I know it. You're nuts! Single-handedly taking out a tank? That's crazy. You're insane. Otacon, is this your idea of a compliment? Yes. You're the toughest, craziest, most hardcore badass on the planet. You're... the shit. The nuclear storage facility is just up ahead. But you're not even halfway to the underground supply tunnel yet. You need to get a move on. That gecko looks as if its drive has gone completely dead. I wonder if it's some mechanical problem. Uh, never mind that, Snake. No time for dead lizards. Keep moving. 
Whoa, what the hell was that? That gecko must have been in hibernation mode or something. One minute it looks dead and then BAM! <laughs> Tell me about it. I think I almost had a heart attack. Seriously though, who'd have thought gecko had that kind of operational mode? Whoever made him must have been a real bastard. From now on, you'd better keep both eyes on those gecko. You don't want to get fooled like that again. No disagreement here. This snow just won't quit, will it? Can't see a thing in this whiteout. Visibility is practically zero. You need to be especially vigilant for enemy patrols. Make good use of your octo camo to help you get through. I don't see any enemies around here. Okay, we'll go through the door all the way at the back. Otacon, last time around we had a few complications and wound up going through the commander's office in the basement. That's right. I remember now. But there's no need to go all the way down there this time, right? The back door takes us straight where we need to go. Mm hmm. Good point. Okay then. Let's get to the back door. I believe the warheads have been removed from those nuclear missiles. The amount of ionizing radiation the Mark III's Geiger counter is detecting is significantly lower than what we'd see if there were actual warheads present. Which means, obviously, that you can use heavy weapons without having to worry about igniting leaking radioactive material and causing a nuclear holocaust. Nice. Keep heading north, all the way to the back. Then, head through the door. Otacon, the elevator's not working. Hmm... The panel lights are dead, too. Looks like the power's out. Still, there's no need to take the elevator, is there? Hurry up and head to the gate at the north end of the building. You're still on the wrong floor. Go downstairs. We're not gonna get anywhere at this pace, old timer. Huh? Snake, that door is locked. <sighs> How do I open it? Security is shut down altogether. You can't release the lock without activating it. You'll have to log in somewhere. I've got it, Snake. My old office is close by. With the power on, you should be able to unlock the door from there. And if you check the facility records, we can find out Rex's status and who's been in and out. You remember where it is, Snake? Uh, I'm not senile yet. Just to be safe, I'm marking it on your map. You old geezer. <laughs> Snake, the password is 48273. Think you can remember that? I told you, I'm not senile. Yet. The north door is locked. It won't budge. We need to access the system through the LAN in my old lab to unlock it. My lab is on floor B2 of that building. Take the elevator to floor B2. You can get to the elevator from the catwalk you're on now. To activate it, stand in front of the control panel and press the action button. Just a little farther to my lab. Go to the south end of the central hallway, turn east, and head straight towards it. Everything looks exactly like I remember it. Except for that wall way in back, anyway. I still can't believe how much damage you caused in such a small space. Ah, the switchboard. Nailed it with a remote control missile to shut down the electric current in the floor. The guidance system in those things takes up so much space, it hardly leaves any room for explosives. Didn't make much of a bang, huh? Hardly. Switchboard's still intact. You're right. The wiring past the switch circuits could still be live. Wait a minute. I'm not gonna get shocked if I walk on this floor, am I? No need to worry. As long as you don't turn the current back on. <laughs> this brings back memories. My colleagues and I used to work in these cubicles. We were all brilliant engineers. The best of the best. And we were close, too. Like family. We used to play pranks on each other all the time. Like, on this one girl's birthday, we stuffed her cubicle completely full of balloons. Or this other guy who got married, when he came back from his honeymoon, he found his workstation had been hollowed out and its guts replaced with jelly beans. <laughs> Uh, sounds like a blast. It was. But all that time, my colleagues and I, we were building wrecks. Here we are, messing around in our cubicles all day like giddy grad students, and what do we end up with? A weapon of mass destruction. 
It's not exactly the sort of thing you can look back on and laugh, is it? You obsess over the past too much. It's a bad habit. Come on, I need directions here. That's your job, right? To support me. Yeah, you're right. You can count on me. We're partners, after all. Good to have you with me, partner. It's good to be here, Snake. I remember this place. After you beat the cyborg ninja, I came out into the hallway and all I saw was a sea of blood. The air was filled with a sickly sweet smell. I remember thinking, this must be what hell is like. My mind couldn't even process what I was seeing at first. <sighs> anyway, keep following that hallway to the north and you'll reach my lab. Keep following that hallway to the north and you'll reach my lab. The door on the first floor is unlocked now. You can go through any time. Do you have a weapon that would work against those gecko? Sure do. Okay, great. Use it to get them out of the way. You don't have any weapons you can use against the gecko? Nope. All out. All I've got on me are small arms. Snake, how can you be so relaxed at a time like this? No use getting upset, Otacon. That's just all I've got. Ah, sometimes you really amaze me. Look, you're gonna have to find some other way to beat those things or else you're stuck. There must be another way. Think, Snake, think. To get up to the first floor, you'll have to do something about those gecko. Get rid of them, Snake! Snake, you have to break through that enemy ambush, right? I know you can do it, but you've got to stay calm and act rationally. Got that? Right now, though, you're in a dangerous situation. You must be under considerable mental stress. You need to resolve this situation as quickly as you can and get yourself to safety. Okay, Snake. The path is clear. Head for the first floor. Use the elevator to get up there. Snake, hurry to the first floor. The door's already unlocked. Use the elevator to get up there. Snake, the door is on the level below you. Take the stairs down and head for the door on the north side. Keep heading north until you reach the door all the way in back. I'll override the Mark III's controls and open the door for you. The Mark III has to stay near the door until I've opened it, and it can't use stealth camo. It's only a matter of time before the gecko find it. No stealth. So what? I thought it didn't work on the gecko anyway. It's true. Stealth doesn't do much against the gecko's sensor suit, but it's better than nothing. Compared to full visibility, the probability of detection is slightly lower. So, if it's even a little bit better being invisible than not, why turn off the stealth? Why? Because I have to use the Mark III's manipulator to open the door, that's why. I don't get it. Once the Mark III activates its stealth camo, the entire machine becomes transparent, including the manipulator. Yeah? So? <sighs> How easy do you think it would be for you to eat a meal, clean your gun, if you couldn't see your own hands? Ah, I got it. Look, Snake, it doesn't take a genius to figure out the Mark III's not gonna survive a run-in with those gecko. Don't let them get close to it until I've opened the door. Okay, no problem. I'm on it. Look at the gecko. See the millowave radar antenna up top? And the intercepting shot launcher on the upper part of its leg? That's the active defense system. Knock out the sensor and you should be able to disable it. Aim for the antenna. Buy us some time so the Mark III can open the door. Distract the gecko and keep them far away from the Mark III. Another ambush? Not exactly. Things are just a little sticky right now. I need to distract the enemy's attention until the Mark III gets the door open. Listen, Snake. Overwhelming fear can lead to careless mistakes. The important thing here is to remain calm. Keep a clear mind. If anybody can pull this off, it's you. We need to keep moving forward. Look at your radar if you need to know which way to go. The comm towers. This is where you fought Liquid's hind D. Mm. That was a tough scrape. But you still managed to shoot down his gunship. 
Up till then, I'd heard that even with a man pads, going one-on-one -on -one against an attack chopper was an act of suicide. I thought only Hollywood action stars did that kind of thing, but you made it look easy. I just told you, it wasn't that easy. Really? But you were all like, oh, I had to take out that helicopter. Real cool, like, like it was nothing. All right, enough chit-chat. Let's get going. We've got a long way to go to Rex's hangar. Yeah, you're right, Snake. Naomi's headed for Rex's hangar. We have to get there quick. Head north. Don't bother going into the comm towers. Go around them. Otacon, she seems to know exactly where I am, even in this damn whiteout. What the hell is going on? Infrared, maybe? No, you're wearing Octocamo. It wouldn't be able to read you. Snake, do you see a pattern in her attacks? Anything that gives you a hint? Right. Now that I think about it, her attacks have been coming from downwind. Which means... Damn. She can smell me. Amazing. Tracking you in this wind. Just by your scent? A St. Bernard can find and rescue a lost hiker in the middle of a blizzard in the Alps. If that beast has an olfactory sensor as keen as a dog's, it's not out of the question. Then what do we do? Octocamo doesn't do anything to mask your scent. All I can do is try and guess where that thing's going to be. Try to move downwind. Can you do it? Either I do, or I don't. Okay, then. Good luck, Snake. This beast has four legs, and it's accompanied by an escort unit wearing powered suits. Watch out for their attack, Snake! Damn it, Otacon. It's mowing those trees down in one shot. What the hell is that beast using? All that power, but still small enough for the beast to carry. And that noise it makes when it charges. Snake, do you remember the weapon Fortune had? A railgun. We come here to keep them from stealing a railgun, and here they are using one against us. I don't want to be conspiratorial, but it seems like something's behind this. Maybe it's just fate. Never mind. You've got to tame that beast. You're right, Hanukkah. Let's do this. Snake, the enemy is coordinating their attacks against you. Don't get too focused on one, or the others will sneak up behind you. Keep your eyes peeled. The beast is crying. In psychology, crying is thought of as a way to freely express and release feelings. That beast cries and cries without stopping. There must be some immense sadness in her, the stress of which is tormenting her mentally and physically. Crying is the only way she can deal with it. The blizzard outside is as bad as ever, Snake. The cold places your body under intense stress and wears away at your psyche. Finding a place to take shelter should prevent your gauge from draining. Keep an eye out for something like that and use it to your advantage. Snake, she's just like the others. Don't let her get close. Each of the beauties has reached for your embrace, and I'll bet this one is no different. Snake, you can't let her get close to you. Stay away. Yo, Snake. I finished laundering that real gun you picked up just now. Knock yourself out. It's on the house. Thanks. Time for another bedtime story, Snake. This one's about crying wolf. You don't need me to tell you there's whole nations in Africa tearing themselves apart in the name of ethnic cleansing. Well... She was born into that environment. When she was a little girl, her village was attacked by rival armed factions. Her parents and siblings were slaughtered, and she was left a refugee. She took her last surviving relative, her baby brother, and ran as far as she could away from the war zone. One day, they came across an enemy unit, so she took her brother and hid in an abandoned shack. And then her brother started to cry. She knew that if the soldiers heard the noise, they would find them and kill them both. So she wrapped her hand as tight as she could around his mouth. As the footsteps gradually went away, she came back to her senses. Her brother wasn't crying anymore. Horrified, she pulled her hand away, covered in sweat and spit. He wasn't breathing. They say wolves eat their own pups when they die. She was spotted wandering through the thick of battle, carrying her dead brother in her arms. She had visions, too, 
a wolf walking alongside her. Every night the wolf would howl and cry, just like her brother did that day. Eventually, she made it to a government-run refugee camp. But by then, her brother's body had rotted away. The camp was crowded with refugees like herself, and little children like her brother. Day and night, she was tormented by the cries of babies. The wolf that followed her heard her sorrowful screams and answered. He made his way around the camp, and one by one, he silenced the children. She tried to stop it, but she was powerless to stop the wolf. A few days passed, and on the eve of the enemy's raid, there wasn't a child left. The adults who survived were torn up pretty bad. Of course, there was never any wolf in that camp. She was the one who killed those babies. But she couldn't bring herself to admit it. She couldn't bear the thought of herself going from one baby to the next, howling like a wolf, snuffing out their little lives. And she never did, even as Crying Wolf, a lonely beast forever stalking the battlefield. Snake, fighting with you made Wolf finally accept what she'd done. She was cleansed by you. If the cries she heard of children on the battlefield have been silenced, it's because of you. You ought to be proud. Three down, one to go. All that's left is Mantis. But you should know, Snake, she's been controlling all the other beasts. She's the beast of beasts. Don't let her get her hooks in you. I won't. See you around, Snake. Hear that, Snake? Yeah. The wolf dogs. Her family. It must be tough for them in this environment with all the people gone. Wolf dogs aren't like other dogs. They're closer to wolves in nature. Happier living in the wild than being kept as pets. Even more so now that they're guarding the grave of a loved one. You sure about that? Trust me. I used to live with dogs just like these. I know what I'm talking about. Okay, if you say so. Snake, we're only halfway there. Let's get going. The warehouse at the north end of the snowfield leads to the blast furnace. Head north. The warehouse at the north end of the snowfield leads to the blast furnace. Head north. Snake? Oh, Rose, it's you. I'm glad to see you're safe. You're not hurt too seriously, are you? No, I'll live. I was listening in on the B&B stories, too. It's heartbreaking. Those things happen every day on the battlefield. But you're right. They're never easy to hear. They've all suffered such unimaginable trauma. Hearing the cries of phantom infants in your head. Facing flashbacks to uncontrollable rage. These are textbook clinical cases for us counselors. PTSD, right? Absolutely. I can't believe anybody would coerce them into entering battle in their state. Hmm. Just goes to show how much faith Liquid has in their combat abilities. That's no excuse. No CSP member, no one with even a shred of conscience for that matter, would ever treat another human being like that. Conscience? Liquid? Listen, lady. It's more than just a matter of conscience. Without the proper treatment, their symptoms will worsen, eventually leaving them unfit for combat entirely. And that can't be good for their commanding officer. Maybe not, but it suits me just fine. Snake! Look, maybe it sounds callous to you, but that's how things are out here. We're talking about survival. Well, yes, but... I know what you're trying to say, and your heart's in the right place. Yeah, maybe you're right. I am... Um... I'm sorry I lashed out like that. Forget about it. Snake, there's only one of those things left. Stay focused. The end is in sight. I'll be careful. Oh! Snake, a link between cruelty to animals and antisocial criminal behavior was established a long time ago. 
If you keep on killing animals for no reason, we will be forced to conduct a thorough psychological review upon your return. The stairs in back lead to the blast furnace. Head that way. The blast furnace is just below. Keep going down. Hold it, Snake. Time to change the disc. I know, I know, it's a pain. But you need to swap disc one for disc two. You see the disc labeled two? Nah. No. Huh? Oh, wait. We're on PlayStation 3. It's a Blu-ray disc. Dual layered, too. No need to swap. Damn it, Otacon. Get a grip. <laughs> yeah, what an age we live in, huh, Snake? Wonder what they'll think of next. The cargo elevator down to Rex's hangar is ahead. It's that big door in the back, on the right. Head through that door and keep going. To get down to the rolling facilities, use the elevator in the northwest corner. Snake, go down to the casting and rolling facilities below. Use the elevator in the northwest corner. The rolling facility is a long, narrow space that stretches south to north. The southern half houses the rollers, while the northern half is used to cool the finished steel sheets. The drainage duct lies beyond that. Head for that drainage duct. Careful, Snake. This place is crawling with gecko and dwarf gecko. It must have been Vamp who sealed the blast furnace door. How do you figure? No one ever comes down here, and yet there's gecko everywhere. He must have figured if I couldn't get the door open, I'd come down here. That freak set up a kill zone just for me. Figures. Snake, don't let him get to you. You've got to get through there alive. Keep moving north through the rolling facility. The door to the drainage duct leading to Rex's hangar is at the north end. Keep going straight down that waterway. You'll end up in front of the hangar. After that, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to Rex. Rex is just up ahead, Snake. But you know that by now, don't you? This is it. Be careful in there. The hangar's just up ahead. Keep heading north. Snake, I went ahead and remotely sent the lift used to bring Rex up to the supply tunnel. So then, all aboard. Make him pay, Snake. Do it for me. For Emma. Do whatever it takes. Just make sure he stays down this time. Get Naomi back for me, please. Snake, I don't know much about Vamp, so there's not much I can offer you by way of advice, but you do have my unconditional support. Don't let him beat you, Snake. You're the only one who can save Dr. Hunter. Remember to take good care of your sight gauge and finish that monster once and for all. Snake, you've got to buy some time until my check of Rex is complete. These Gecko are rigged to blow themselves up. You need to destroy the frame completely with a powerful weapon before they finish their self-destruct sequence. Snake, that railgun Wolf was using. Yeah, it's serviceable. Good. That should give you more than enough power. Use it to shoot the Gecko. Stop those Gecko. Don't let them self-destruct. If one of them looks like it's about to self-destruct, shoot it immediately. You can do this, Snake. Listen to me, Snake. In this situation, your aim has to be perfect. You can't afford a single mistake. Avoid letting your psych slip, otherwise your hand tremors will worsen. Your psych gauge should always be a top priority. Get to the port area at the end of the supply tunnel as fast as you can. Go, Snake, go! Just in case you forget anything, you can review the controls for Rex in Briefing in the Mark III menu. I'm sorry things had to happen that way, Snake. But there'll be time to mourn later. For now, you have to get out of there as fast as you can. Go! The clock is ticking, Snake. Get out of there as fast as you can. Time is not on your side here. Keep your cool, but try to hurry. I hate to say it, but I think Liquid's got the advantage when it comes to piloting Metal Gear. After all, he's had Ray in his hands for quite some time now. But not to worry. I was Rex's lead designer, and I'm here to support you. I've installed an emulator of Rex's main CPU and DSP on Gaudi, 
We'll run it in parallel with Rex's processors to enable distributed processing of control tasks. It'll give us a big boost in throughput, which should make Rex as fast and agile as Ray. Well, I have no idea what that means, but it sounds good to me. It's okay, Snake. I know you can win this. Thanks, Anakin. Do me a favor, Snake. Get as close to Ray as you can. Get closer? What the hell for? I created a special control program back when I was designing Rex. I thought it might come in handy here. What kind of program? Rex is armed with powerful self-defense systems. Missiles, laser, designed to protect it during solo ops overseas. But some of us engineers were worried about what would happen if it found itself in a close-range shootout. We got to thinking, why not use Rex's tough shell as a weapon in itself? In other words, why not make it into a street fighter? The program was completed, and we got fantastic results on a supercomputer simulation. But the project was shelved before we could make our pitch. Didn't fit in with military regulations. But... But... I, uh, went ahead and installed the program anyway. You know, secretly. Seriously? I just rechecked the program on Gaudi's simulator, and as far as I can tell, it should still work fine. Okay, just tell me how to use it. The program is still in alpha, so it's low on flexibility, and only gives results in specific cases. I'll give you a signal when the conditions are right to activate it. When you see the signal, just press the action button and Ray won't even know what hit it. But first, you have to get close to Ray. Let's do it. All right. That's what I like to hear. Come on, Snake. You can't let Liquid beat you. So Liquid finally shows his face. It's the moment of truth, Snake. The man you've pursued all this time is standing right in front of you. I know it's tough to keep a cool head, but stay focused and watch his movements closely. It's up to you, Snake. Eyes on the prize. Come on, Snake. You can win this one. Snake, the catapult malfunctioned when it launched Meryl. She landed some distance away from you. <sighs> and Akiba ended up in the drink. There's no time to rendezvous with them. You'll each have to make your own way to the server room. I'll be following you with a Mark III. I can't be there to watch your back in person, but I'm with you all the way. Good luck, Snake. Liquid has dispatched armor-enhanced troops from his personal army to that area. You do not want to get surrounded by them. Make sure they don't see you, or if you do engage, try and take them out one at a time. How's it going over there, Otacon? The troops above decks are having a shootout with the enemy over on your end. It's a total war zone. Uh, you're gonna be okay. For now, at least. The Missouri's protected by some pretty thick armor. Good. Sounds like everything's under control. Don't count on it lasting. If things get bad, abandon ship. Got it? Yeah, I know. Same goes for you too, Snake. Don't end up like Admiral Nelson. Don't worry. I'm not ready to hang it up yet. Not until I finish the mission. That's the spirit, Snake. Snake, proceed towards the ship's stern. We're going to infiltrate the interior of Haven. The entrance to the interior of Haven is towards the stern of the ship. Head toward the stern. This is it. You finally reached Liquid's home base. I'm here to support you just like always. Snake, promise me you'll finish the mission and come back safely. But you're deep behind enemy lines. There's no telling when danger might strike next. Stay alert and proceed with caution. But there's no telling when you might encounter an enemy patrol. Please be careful. Don't let them find you. The server room is still a ways off. Keep moving. And be sure to keep an eye on your radar so you know which way to go. But you're in tight quarters and there must be dozens of enemies looking for you. Do everything you can to avoid contact with them. You've got to protect Meryl! Don't let the enemy get to her! The only way forward is to get rid of them. Snake, you know what to do. Snake, you're the only one who can protect Meryl. You've got to do something before they get their hands on her. Snake, what are you thinking? 
Are you trying to kill her or what? Stop it, Snake! Meryl can't take this kind of abuse! Keep her safe! Don't hurt her! Enough is enough, Snake! How can you call yourself a man hurting a woman like that? Oh! Snake, you're supposed to be protecting Meryl, not hurting her. Stop it, Snake! Don't let Meryl take any more damage! Snake, you brute! Why would you keep hurting her like that? Ugh! Snake, this beast, Screaming Mantis, is a puppeteer. She manipulates others into doing the fighting for her. <sighs> Control seems to kick in when you get hit by that creepy ghost thing. <sighs> Be careful you don't get jerked around too, okay? That beast is the only thing standing between you and the server room. You've got to take her out! Snake, remember how Psycho Mantis controlled Meryl using telepathy? Well, I'm thinking this thing does it by manipulating the nanomachines inside a target's body, forcing them to secrete opioids and sending them into hypoesthesia. In other words, she puts them into a sleepwalking state and controls their muscle systems directly. <sighs> What is that ghost-looking thing, anyway? My guess? A hologram. Meant to intimidate people. Having some freaky thing like that suddenly pop up in front of you is enough to make anybody jump. Hmm. Like how special forces dress all in black when they go into a raid. The control signals for the nanomachines must be embedded in the laser used to create the hologram. That's probably why Mantis can't control you unless you touch it. Hmm. But she's controlling dead guys, too. What about that? Same concept. Didn't you ever do that experiment in high school where you attach electrodes to a dead frog's leg to make it twitch? The nanomachines are capable of storing an electric charge. It's entirely possible that Mantis is using that electricity to make muscles contract. If she really is controlling people through their nanomachines, you know a way to counter that, right? Give it a try. Snake. You have a way to suppress nanomachine activity, don't you? So go ahead and give it a shot. Snake, this is Mantis we're talking about. The fight on Shadow Moses? That's right. Back then we defeated him by using multiple controller ports to counteract his mind-reading powers. Snake, try using the same tactic again. Plug the controller into controller port 2. It's not gonna work, Roy. Huh? Do you see any controller ports here? Deceiving Mantis is going to take more than simply pushing the PS button to switch controller numbers. But then, that means... It's impossible. Sorry. Well, I'll be damned. Well, so much for the controller. But that beast has another weak spot. Do you remember what it is? Weak spot? You mean the bust modeled on Mantis's true face? The one with all the leather bands wrapped around it. That's the one. Matt has always hated seeing his birth face. Attack that bust and break off the leather seal. Colonel, I can't do that. Sure you can. Seeing his true face is sure to break Mattis's concentration. There's no bust. What? There is no bust here to attack. You're kidding. The women of the B&B &B Corps. One laughed, one raged, and one cried. And now the final beast who won't stop screaming. That wailing may be the product of some unendurable fear that's gnawing away inside of her. I can't even imagine what kind of trauma would cause a person to scream like that. Snake, don't forget to keep tabs on your psych level. If it starts to dip, try to get it back up as soon as possible. Otacon, what's going on? I can't move. You can't move? What the heck did you... Oh, Snake, did you set the controller number to something other than one? <laughs> Let me guess. You thought back to your battle with Psycho Mantis and figured the same tactic would actually work again, right? Well, I... I... <sighs> nice try, Snake. But this time the controller number has to be one, or else you can't control your actions. What the hell? Whose dumb idea was that? Don't look at me! I'm sorry, but it's simply not going to work this time around. Fine. Snake, without those puppets, the beast can't control her victims. Focus your attacks on the puppets. 
Get her to drop them, and she'll be completely helpless. Aim for the puppets. Watch out for the ghosts coming out of Mantis's puppets. Touch one, and she'll make a puppet of you, too. Snake, Meryl is under that monster's control. Free her before it's too late. It looks like conventional weapon attacks won't even scratch Mantis. Really? I hadn't noticed. Any ideas? I'm sorry. Nothing I can think of right now. There must be some way, though. No! Snake! Mantis got Meryl. She's going to blow her brains out unless you do something. You've got to free her from the beast's control. Snake, remember your battle with Psycho Mantis? Knock Meryl out like you did back then. That way she won't be able to hurt herself. When the beast's victims take damage or get knocked out, it looks like they're temporarily freed from its control. Huh. Maybe because the shock of the attack creates a disturbance in the nanomachine interface. But then, knocking them out wouldn't... or would it? I... well, anyway, whatever the reason, it's something that can work to your advantage. Don't hesitate to use it. Just don't get carried away and kill any of your comrades, okay? If you can knock them out or put them to sleep, all the better. I've got an idea. What if you use those puppets to turn the tables on the beast? Control her instead. Huh. Use the puppets? It's worth a try, at least. First, select one in the item window. Then, press the attack button to shoot out a ghost, just like a weapon. If the ghost hits its target, it's showtime. Got all that, Snake? Go on, take her for a spin. When you get control of the beast body, jerk it around. That'll really do some damage. Make her dance, Snake! Snake, use the puppet. Equip it by selecting it in the item window. Once it's equipped, press the attack button to shoot out a ghost. After the ghost hits its target, tilt the controller to control the enemy. Watch out, Snake! Don't let her cling to you! Keep your distance! Such agony in those screams. You may be tempted to try and save her, but don't let sympathy get the better of you. Remember the other snake. She wants to kill you. Don't let her get too close. So, you bested the last beast. That doll you just picked up lets you manipulate anybody who's got nanomachines in them. Sounds like something the devil's cooked up, if you ask me. Mantis came from South America. She was born and raised in a country racked by never-ending civil wars. Her village was attacked by enemy forces and burned to the ground. This was when she was still a little girl. Hunted by enemy death squads, she was separated from her family. She barely managed to escape with her life. Ended up in the basement of this one building. It was full of corpses that had been dumped there. Almost all of them had been tortured to death. She was petrified with fear. And then, she heard the sound of heavy boots on the floor above her, followed by shrieking screams, the kind that would make every hair on your body stand straight up. She had stumbled across a makeshift torture chamber. Somebody had locked the door, and she was trapped. It was dark. It was dank, and it was full of a wretched stench. She couldn't sleep with the screams of torture victims all around her. All she could do was sit curled up in one corner of the room, trembling. A week passed, then ten days. She managed to keep hydrated by drinking the filthy water pooled up on the floor, but there was no food. Being trapped in that kind of place, half crazy from hunger, did a serious number on her mind. Did you know female mantises eat their mates? The screams went on day and night. She covered her ears, but it didn't help. And then she was saved by a little black mantis that taught her how to block out the screams, how to plug up her inner ears. What the hell are you talking about? I'm saying, Snake, that when she couldn't stand the hunger any longer, she started feeding on the corpses, but only the male ones. She didn't realize who was doing it. In her mind, it was a female mantis devouring her mates. It was like one big twisted waking dream. 
There was no Mantis, of course. It was all a hallucination. Nothing more than some story spun by another person she'd created inside. Her unstable mind was what made her so vulnerable. Later, they ripped out what was left of her psyche with drugs and hypnosis and implanted the persona of Psycho Mantis. It wasn't her will that controlled the B&Bs. It was Psycho Mantis, half assimilated into her soul, pulling the strings. Screaming Mantis was just another puppet. Anyway, she survived several weeks down in that hellhole and finally got back to the surface. But the screams in her head didn't subside. They would always be with her. Only this time, they weren't real. The inner earplugs didn't work anymore. The Black Mantis had disappeared. There was no place left to escape. Which is why she was always screaming. To drown out the ones in her own head. But it's over now. You freed Mantis from that dark nightmare. Hmm. The last of the beasts. You got it, pal. Well, I'm done playing storyteller for a while. Now get going. GW is waiting. And this time, you get to make up the ending. The coast is clear. Quick, use this chance to head toward GW. Run, Snake! You've got to get to the server room while Merrill is still holding out. Go! Our prayers are with you. Run, Snake! Go, Snake. You're almost there. Just a little farther. Your psych is doing great right now. Keep going. Snake, look at your psych gauge. It's close to empty. Keep your psych high in order to get where you need to go. Do what you can to restore it. Your psych has dropped pretty low, Snake. You should recover as much as you can before moving on. You're almost there, Snake. Move like your life depends on it, because it does. I'm with you, friend. So please, hold on a little longer. I know it hurts, Snake, but hang in there. Get through to the other side before you're cooked. 